So if your boss is trying to apply um, some sort of will, he's saying, right, you've got to take a medical procedure, and there is no contract, you did not agree to that, what he's actually doing is carrying out a torturous act upon you. And now you are in a position to sue your boss. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Raising the Bar, myself, John Cooper, and today is an incredible episode because I've got Pete Stone from The Sovereign Project, and we'll be talking about all aspects of being sovereign and pulling yourself out of a corporate system, which is affecting our lives. Um, Pete, would you like to go into your story and what led you to create this project and, you know, helping okay. us reclaim our sovereignty? Okay, well, I'll, I'll, I'll try and keep it short. <laughs> um but yeah, I've always been rebellious. I've always mm -hmm. questioned things. So whenever someone tells me something, I want to know how. How does it work? Why is that the case? So I always question things. I used to get into trouble with, at school all the time. Okay. Now, what it was for me is I started getting into this and started researching this sort of stuff back in the early 90s when the internet became accessible to us. So I got my first computer, mm. uh, you know, 56K modem, and off I went. I started researching stuff. And at an early sort of stage of my research, I discovered that the news, the government were lying to us on a massive mm. scale. And it just carried on that way. Um, fast forward three decades, and obviously 2020 happened. Um, my life was actually going in a slightly different direction. I had no um, uh, desire to do what I'm doing now. It wasn't planned. Um, I was actually trying to build my own supercar, but that's a completely <laughs> different, um, different story. So anyway, what happened was, is 2020 happened, uh, the lockdowns began, people started to panic, and then, of course, they had the mandates for a certain medical procedure. Mm. And this, this is when I said, I've got to do something, because these people were panicking, millions of people were panicking and thinking, they had to do this medical procedure because of a mandate. Mm. And I was going, look, this is not how mandates work. You can't be just mandated. You have to agree to it in a contract. Mm. You have to give the authority to the person who is mandating you. So I thought, I better get the message out. So I set up a website um, called thesovereignproject.live. And on there is a whole load of information, very easy to read. Mm. And then I asked uh, Mark Devlin if I could have a little chat on his podcast to get the word out mm. there. So I did that, and I just said to people, there's a website, help yourself, download it, learn about contracts and all this sort of stuff. And I thought that would be it. And then, no, it took off. <laughs> so I was getting multiple requests to do podcasts and all this sort of stuff. I ended up doing uh, workshops. I help people uh, every week at a workshop. I go through all this stuff, and it's just escalated. Mm. I do this full time now. So I'm um, afraid my, my supercar yeah. dreams has come to an end. I'm now doing this. <laughs> yeah. I and mean, as we were just saying before, it's such a, a deep and, um, you know, over, you know, over encompassing issue, isn't it? It just affects every single aspect of our lives. It does. Doesn't it? And so it's like peeling off the layers of the onion to this, isn't it? And then once you've peeled one off, there's another one there oh, yeah. and another one and another one. But you were mentioning before when we had the cup of tea, if enough of us do this, then yes. it builds up critical mass whereby we can actually start to create some serious change. Absolutely correct. I mean, here's the thing is, although I train, I can't tell uh, what people should do. I can't, people ask yeah. me all the time, what do I do? What do I do? I said, yeah. I cannot tell you what yeah. to do, but what I can do is I can explain to you how the system works, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, the thing is, is even when you learn how the system works, even if you get your paperwork perfect and your remedy perfect it still does not guarantee you're going to win because the system is ultimately corrupt um the truth behind the system is there is no system end of okay there's the illusion that there's a system so we all believe that it's a fair system it isn't mm -hmm. so the only true way to, to escape the system is numbers it's always going to be a numbers game yeah. and that, the only way out is to become sovereign you can't fake this you can't say i've got a badge now i'm sovereign whoopie do you know, no 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 this is a mindset thing when you get the right mindset, you will be able to answer almost all of your own questions. I mean, here's another thing. I'll, I'll, I'll explain. Let me try and explain the mindset thing and the brainwashing mindset. So most people out there are brainwashed. And if I tell them something, I'll say, look, this is how you deregister your car or something like that. They'll come back. This is someone who's brainwashed. They'll come back to me and say, oh, are we allowed to do that? Mm. Well, who are you asking that question of? Well, by the way, who, who's we? There's no we yeah. going on here, yeah. okay? You know, but you go, if you are asking, am I allowed to do that? Who are you asking? If you're asking yourself, then you're brainwashed. 
Okay, so you have to break that. So you've got to learn about sovereignty, you've got to learn about obligation, you've got to learn about informed consent, all this sort of and you've got to learn about authority. Yeah. So you've got to start with that. Absolutely. So shall we maybe start with the authority then? Yes. <laughs> and you know, let's the, the first pieces of the puzzle, the first rung of the ladder of all this. So let's start off when we're born. Oh. You know, um there's a sort of a bait and switch that happens, isn't there? There's sort of a bit of trickery that happens. We think yes. that we're coming into the world as, well, we do. We come into the world as human beings, obviously. Yeah. But then during the um, the birthing process, the mum delivers the baby. Yes. Um, then something then happens which creates an entity, a dead entity, a corporate entity. Yes. And this is where we all become, what, straw men is the term that's used? Uh, yeah, you know, it's it, a casual it, term. Effect, in, in effect. But um, yeah. corporate entities that are then used, floated on the stock market, we become assets to the wealthy, right? Correct. Bonded slaves. Yeah. You become part of the Commonwealth. Yes. So, um, yeah. Yeah, see, look, even, <laughs> you've just broken that spell for me. There you, you know, go. <laughs> there's so many words like that. They're just spells, aren't they? And when you hear the, the meaning of it, it kind of breaks the spell. Spelling. Spelling. That's right. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So, the, I mean, the Commonwealth is where all the slaves are. So, mm. it's where the uh, parasite class at the top get their wealth from the Commonwealth. And here's the thing is they even get you to celebrate your slavery with the Commonwealth Games. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. I was just okay. yeah. yeah, well. Yeah. So it's all in the language. They yeah. literally tell you. So yeah. the people who control the system, which is basically the Crown Council of the 13, mm -hmm. that runs the, the biggest corporation on the planet, which is the Crown Corporation, they own everything, okay, including yeah. governments. Governments are corporations, okay? They own everything. Now the good news is that a corporation mm -hmm. Is a dead entity so technically they don't own anything because a corporation can't own anything because it's dead it has no rights okay when you understand that you realize you can take everything back but we can get into that later yeah but the thing with sovereignty let's touch on the natural side of things yeah. is when you are born technically you are born sovereign however mm. you aren't capable of actually using your sovereignty because you can't even speak you can't even walk okay so you are protected by the jurisdiction of your parents or your mother and father remember parents is a legal title mm. but if i use that you know throughout this interview hopefully people will know the difference so your mother and father um, your father is the um the protector of the family okay he has first title and it's his word his dominion he makes the law in his court and he protects you and his wife okay so the idea is is you are sovereign when you're born but you can't use that sovereignty so all your rights if you like are put into a box tucked away until you turn of age which is normally 16 so in six when you turn 16 you've reached the age of consent mm. so the age of consent means you now have the ability to consent to entering into a contract at that point you've become sovereign so what you do, your mother and father will then say, right, there's your box, there's all your rights, there's your court, you now have the ability to make law, you have your own jurisdiction, you have your own world now, you stand on your own two feet, okay, you become responsible. Remember, you are irresponsible until you reach the age of consent, because your parents are responsible for you, that's what it means, mm -hmm. okay, you are, you are without responsibility. So when you become sovereign, you are now responsible for your own life. Now, what it also means is that no one has authority over you. Mm -hmm. Up until that time, you're 16, your mother and father had authority over you. So you, they told you when you go to bed mm -hmm. and what you have to eat for dinner and all the rest of it, okay? They tell you they have authority over you. When you reach the age of consent, you now have authority over your own life. Okay, that's what sovereignty means. You have ultimate authority over your life. And once you've got that, then you will realize where authority comes from. It comes from you. My authority comes from me. Your authority comes from you. There's no such thing as authorities. This is brainwashing. So the average person out there says, oh, you know, the authorities. And you know, what do you mean authorities? Like, oh, the school board or whatever. No, 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 no. That's a corporation. So when you understand where authority comes from, authority, the word authority comes from author. You are the author of it. You are the author of your authority. So when you understand where authority comes from, you're on your journey now. Because if someone's trying to apply their authority upon you, you're saying, where, where are you getting this authority from? I didn't give you this authority. This is my story. Correct. Yes. Yes. Mm. Yes, me. Mm. So if someone's trying to impose authority upon you, you say, well, where are you getting it from? I didn't give it to you. I didn't give my consent. Where are you getting this from? Normally, authority is given to someone else through contract. This is very easy to understand. If you go and work for somebody, then you'll sit down with that person, you'll draw up a contract, and your boss has authority over you within the limitations of that contract. 
So there's normally a time, you know, yeah. nine till five, Monday to Friday. If you've agreed to operate the widget machine, then your boss can tell you what to do regarding the widget machine. He cannot tell you what to do if there's a medical procedure involved because you didn't agree to that. You didn't give him the authority to do this. Yeah. So if your boss is trying to apply um, some sort of will, he's saying, right, you've got to take a medical procedure and there is no contract, you did not agree to that, what he's actually doing is carrying out a torturous act upon you. Mm. And now you are in a position to sue your boss because he's done something unlawful. So authority, you've got to, this is where everything starts. Authority. And if you don't know that, you're not going to win this game. Absolutely. Yeah. Actually, funnily enough, just quickly on that, I was previously in another studio and the guy was making me take a test, you know, <laughs> and I just said, look, I, don't, I, I didn't even say I wouldn't. I just said, I don't feel comfortable doing that. He blew his top and, and he was absolutely going wild at me about that. And I feel I wish I'd just, you know, <laughs> spoken to you before that, because there was almost a slight part of me that felt a little bit like I was in the wrong for not yeah. complying and going along with it. Because that's the general felt experience for a lot of people. They feel I just want things to go easy. I just want to make sure that I'm not, yes. you know, um, ruffling feathers or anything. I'll just kind of like nicely go along with everything. Yes. But really what we're saying here is this, I, unless it's mandated, I can, I'm my own sovereign being. I'll do yeah. what I want to do. I'll put something in my, you know, nose or mouth, or whatever, if I want to. Yes. But it's almost as if I, I was made to feel guilty about choosing sovereignty in that moment. It's ridiculous, isn't it? The way Absolutely. that we've been gaslighted and, and manipulated. Isn't uh, it? Even you mentioned mandate. If you, you still have to agree to the mandate. Yeah. You cannot be forced to do anything against your will. Anything. Yeah. Anything. Okay. Unless you give consent. Remember how a mandate works. A mandate only works if you consented to a contract mm. before the mandate. Yeah. So that's how it works. So if you chat, say me and you, let's yeah. say, for example, we and we draw, it's, so let's say the year is 2019. And so we have a contract. We, set, we put, mm. put a contract together. And I say part of this contract is if there is a uh, giant mm. global medical procedure going on. Yeah. And I want to be able to uh, mandate you with a certain medical procedure. And you agree to that. You sign the contract. I sign the contract. Now I have the right to mandate you. So a year later, when 2020 comes along, I can yeah. show you the contract, show you your signature and mine, and say, I have the right to mandate you to have a medical procedure. That is lawful and legal. Mm. Without that contract, mandates do not apply. Yeah. They cannot be applied to you, forced upon you. Mm. I mean, going back to the politeness thing as well. Yeah, I think too many people are they don't want to cause a tr to cause trouble. Yeah, so they go along with it. That's a massive mistake. Okay, because the problem is, is if you just give an inch, they will take a mile. You'll become a doormat. Mm. So people have got to stop being polite. You can be a good person. I mean, I'm a good person. I like a bit of a laugh. I hold the door open for a woman, all this sort of stuff. I will be say please and thank you and all the rest of it. Not a problem. I'll be a very nice person. I am a nice person. You're a far-right Nazi if you do that in nursing. <laughs> <I know. laughs> if I open the door for a woman, <laughs> yeah. oh, far-right, look at <laughs> yeah, yeah, toxic yeah. masculinity. Yeah. 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 Oh, God. But, yeah. <laughs> but be a nice person. Be honorable. Stick to your word and all the rest of it. But if someone tries to violate your rights mm. stop being polite don't be polite anymore yeah this is when you show your your claws and your teeth you say oh you're stepping over Just back off yeah and that's it and people go oh okay okay you've got to set boundaries don't be nice stop being nice don't be polite anymore <laughs> mm. could we maybe give an example of that just quickly and then we'll move on to the birth certificate i guess but yeah you know for instance you know wearing a mask during the <laughs> yeah, the nonsense that we had going on. I know that, I mean, you're going to have a go at me for this, but I wore my little exemption. Oh, <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> exemption. Um, well, I actually wore it underneath my shirt just because it gave me a bit of confidence, if right. I'm being honest with you. So I wasn't displaying it to the world. But even that, you would say, is like, you know, I'm um, giving away my power a little bit. You are. I mean, um, we yeah. Can, we can, I mean, yeah, no, I get it. Principally, I get I understand that. But yes. let, let's just say that I... For a lot of people, and this came up, I might even flash up in the post-production here, where me and my friend went to walk into um, an Aldi and the security guy stopped us and he said, it's by law, you have to wear a mask. And we said, it's not by law. You're not allowed to stop us. We're going to go in, you know. And he was like, actually manhandled my friend as well. You know, not manhandled, but sort yes. of, you know, we put his arms on him and, he, you know, this kind of stuff. And we filmed it. That's right. You don't have a permit? I don't have to have a permit. Why? You don't need a permit to enter a shop. You don't need a permit to enter a shop. 
we you get don't need a permit. permit. You could be, you can actually incur a lot of um, damages because of this. Uh, I don't care. Why, why are you not letting me buy food? Why are you not letting me buy my food? My because weekly shop. Because I'm not wearing a mask. Yeah. I don't have to wear. It's With not law to wear a mask. It's a law to wear no, a mask. No, show, show me the law. I will show, show you the law, but you're not going in. That's all. Right, show me the law. I won't go in. Show me the law. We are allowed to ask if you want a mask. Yeah, I don't want one. Okay, that's fine. Can I buy some food? Well, in your company, you... is that all right? Is it against the law to buy food without wearing a face protection? No, but we are allowed to challenge. Okay, so you've challenged if... me. Is that all right? Thank, Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. I'm, I'm lucky that your colleague here has explained right, to you. Right, let's just cool. leave it here. Shop in and out. But what is the response to that? What is the protocol? What's the way that you, and you know, maybe the steps, you know, mm -hmm. the first step might be, you know, is this man that, who are you, you know, and then you go a little bit tougher, right? Yes. I mean, this it, might happen again is what I'm saying. You okay, know? okay, okay. Let's get into that. I mean, the thing is, there's a few different remedies to this. So you've got yeah. to understand some what's going on to be before you can play the game. Yeah. Now, just going back on the exemption thing, right? Yeah. Here's the problem. If you accept an exemption, what you're also doing is accepting the obligation. Mm. Right? So if you, if you accept an exemption, what you're saying is saying, yes, I should be wearing the mask but now I'm exempt from it. Now, also the problem is this, is where are you getting the exemption from? It's not you. You're getting it from someone else. You're getting it from a higher authority. So straight away, you've lost your sovereign status. Now, the thing as well with an exemption is if it comes from someone else, they can also take it away. So that's the dangers of an exemption, okay? Now, well, it's like protesting, right? Because the, yes. the, 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 the subtext there is, I agree that this is going on and, I, and I'm kind of, you know, I'm accepting this is going on and now I'm kind of resisting it rather than just non-compliance, right? Yes. And just doing your own thing. Do is, you? Is it not that kind of same sort of dynamic? Is, yes. In yeah. fact, there's, um, in fact, there's a, there's a document on uh, my website, the, the sovereign project live. Okay. Yeah. On there, it it's called traps and it yeah. goes through each one. So protesting is another trap or petitioning. Petitioning is exactly right. Yeah. But here's the thing. If you protest something, you are accepting the obligation. That's how you're doing it. Yeah. If you petition something, you are accepting the obligation. You're actually saying, yes, it applies to me. However, I am now protesting. Mm -hmm. A sovereign does not protest. He serves notice. Yeah. Okay. So the way, is, the way it works is you just carry on with your normal life. Mm -hmm. um, but you would serve notice on, say, let's say for the 15-minute series. So what you would do is you hear this rumor that, oh, this politician is going to do a 15-minute city in your area. And he's going to close some of the roads. Well, you know that that violates your right to travel. Yeah. So you would serve notice on the politician and say, right, I serve notice. I'm a serve notice. If you violate my right to travel, and this isn't a passport, this is your personal right to travel mm -hmm. as a sovereign operating in the private. If you violate my right to travel, I'm going to sue you for £10,000 per infraction. Mm. You, you, don't, you take no messing. You're no, not what? polite per infraction. What's that? So that means every time yeah. you travel and your right to travel. Right. Yeah. yeah. So... What you do is every time you drive down the street and they put one of those planters there, yeah. well, it's violating your right to travel. You can't mm. travel anymore. So you go, okay, take the picture, get your two witnesses, send in your, you know, your notice. Yeah. You owe me 10 grand. I'm simplifying, obviously. And then the following day, do it again. What, you, you violate my right to travel again. Mm. That's another 10 grand you owe me, fella. Mm. Now you get enough people. This is why it's a numbers game. You get enough people doing that. 15 minutes, it comes to an end. End off. Yeah. Okay, but yeah, going back to the exemption stuff um, and how to handle the the mask thing. Now you've got to understand what's going on, um, and you've got to understand about jurisdictions. Yeah. So most, just about all businesses today are registered, right? Now what register means is handing over authority, right? So a shop, you go into a shop, it's registered, and it's registered with the UK, which is a corporation. Once you've registered with the UK, then all acts and statutes now apply to you or apply to the business. So you can start using acts and statutes upon that business if you want to go down that road. Now, what you can do is you can go into the shop and they say you've got to wear a mask and you can either go after the employee. Now, you've got to separate the man from the employee. You've got to say, well, what am I going to do? What remedy am I going to do? Am I going to sue the employee? Am I going to sue the, the shop? Or am I going to sue the man behind the title, like security guard? Mm. Security guard is a legal title. 
Or do you sue Billy Bob, the man behind the legal title? It's your choice. Now, if you want to go after Billy Bob, let's forget the shop. You say, right, Billy Bob, um, when did I allow you to apply any form of medical procedure upon me? Mm. Individually. Individually, yeah. yeah. Billy Bob. I'm not mm. Security guard, I don't care. The shop, I don't care. Any of that. Mm. Billy Bob. And he's going to say, well, I didn't. Mm. All right, what right do you have to tell me that then? And then you can sue him personally, or he backs off. Or you can actually go down a different route, and you can use the legal system, if you wish, and you can say you can go after him as an employee. So let's say a security guard comes up and says, right, you've got to wear your mask, and then you go down the same, same uh, route. Uh, mm. This corporation, what right do you have to force me to wear a mask? And he's going to say acts and statutes, blah, 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 mm. whatever. It doesn't really apply to you anyway. Then you say, right, get me the manager. And you get the manager there and say, right, manager, this employee, now we're dealing with a different jurisdiction, this employee is trying to mandate me to have a medical procedure. Because wearing a mask is for medical reasons. And then you can go down the route of, um, mm. does he have the right to do that? How do you want to discipline your employee? <laughs> you can say that outright to yes, the manager. Exactly. Because mm. here's the thing. If the manager does not discipline the employee, he's liable. This is called vicarious liability. Mm. Mm. So this is the way that you handle it. You, you deal with the person on that point, first of all, okay? You don't jump to conclusions that it's the corporation doing any of this. You say, I am judging the actions of the employee on what he's doing. Then I'm going to report it to the corporation and see what the corporation wants to do. If they don't want to discipline this employee, then they're now liable. Now, you can sue the employee for 50000 or whatever, but you're going to sue the corporation for probably $1.5 million mm. because you're going to escalate it. Really, you can? Yes, because you say, well, he's violating my rights. And you can set your own price, can you? Because it's yes. your court. Well, the way, yes, absolutely. Now, the way it works is normally what you would do, if you're suing somebody, you would sue, if it's trespass against your estate, so you would work out what the cost of your estate is, and that is the value that you can normally uh, sue somebody for, okay? Now, there's another sort of level to this. Let's say your estate's not worth a great deal. Let's say, I don't know, it's 50 grand or mm. whatever. And you're dealing with a multi-billion dollar corporation. If you're going to sue them for 50 grand, that's not really punishment on their side because they go, 50 grand, we, we forget, we mm. lose that down the sofa. Mm. Mm. So for them, it's 1.5 million then. That's going to hurt you. So it's, it's like that. Law is about balance. Right. But yes, you've got to learn the jurisdictions. You've got to play that. And you've mm. got to make the person liable, the one who's doing it to you, mm. the one who's stopping you getting into the shop. What's your name? Billy Bob. Right. Okay. Well, you violate my rights, mate. Get the manager down here, and then they'll back off. Yeah. And what if the manager then also kicks up a bit of a stink? Great. You've got two employees violating your rights. Oh, right. So you, is it like, are you serving them a notice at this point? What is yes. it? Yes. Yeah. I mean, hopefully you record it. Yeah, you record Get it on, it your, yeah. on your camera. Yeah. If you've got two mates with you, that's even better. Yeah. You know, because um, then you've got two witnesses. They can stand up in court. Um, but yes, you'll get the, I mean, don't escalate to violence. Um, just say, oh, right, so you're violating my rights. You're trying to mm. impose a medical procedure on me. Yeah. Does that mean that you're not allowing me into this shop? And if they say, we're not letting you in, oh, right, you're violating my rights again. Because mm. it's an open door policy, you see. This is mm. a shop that's actually registered. You have to let me in. I am the member of the public. Is this not open to the public? If it is, you can't stop me coming in. Won't they say we can't allow anyone in by law? Yeah, they'll say law, but it's up to them. Burden of proof is on them. You can start asking, okay, then, um, again, you're switching jurisdictions. You can say, okay, then quote the law. It isn't law. Mm. It's corporate policy. Mm. Right, let's talk about corporate policy. Yeah. This is a trick that a lot of these so-called people will play on you. Like, oh, it's law. And I go, okay, and they'll, they'll say, what do you mean? Mm. And the acts and statutes, they'll quote an act and statute upon you. You will know that I, that is a corporate policy. Yeah. Now, a lot of these um, a lot of mail that's sent in the post trying to scam you for money will quote acts and statutes within that document. Uh, council tax is one of yeah. them. Now, what they're hoping to do, the person who signs it, by the way, it's more, normally not signed. Normally, there's no name on it. So straight away, you know it's fraudulent. So this document will come through with acts and statutes. And what the person who sent it to you is hoping you will do is apply those acts and statutes to yourself. So what you're doing is you're administrating corporate policy upon yourself. So in other words, they're not committing fraud because you've done it to yourself. So what you should be doing is saying, hang on a minute, you're quoting acts and statutes in this letter. Please give me the name of the person who's going to administrate these acts and statutes upon me. Mm. That's when those people start panicking. 
They can't do that. Because it isn't anyone. There isn't anyone. Exactly right. Mm. It's one giant bluff. Yeah, it's a, it's a bluff. It's a bluff. That's what it is. And because you just accept it, then you become part of that contract. Yes. That offering. It's an know? offer. Yeah. And you've applied it to yourself. So when they say it in the shop, let's say, and they say, no, this is law, you know, and it's not. It's, a, it's a, an act or a statute. Yes. What could you say at that point? Could you say, show me the person that's actually enforcing this? Yes. It, you can ask the uh, security guard yeah. or the manager. But you've got to use the terminology correctly. You say, are you administrating that act and statute upon me? Yeah. And if it says yes... Right, I've just got you on camera, fella. See you in court. Wow. Right. This is serious, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Did you did you give authority to him to apply acts and statutes upon you? Yeah. No. Does he have the right to do that? No. Mm. No one's going to step up to this because it puts them on the line. Because that's it. They are liable for it. It's a massive bluff. It is, yeah. It only applies to your birth certificate anyway, which is a corporation, and they won't tell you that. Yeah. So how about we go back into that, we kind of circle back into the birth certificate then, because yeah. that's like the origins of it, isn't it? It is. That's like where the first bit of trickery happens, the bait and switch. Yes. So obviously we're human, we're sentient beings, we're born, but then immediately we're created a, a, like a dead entity from that. Could yeah. you explain that a little bit, Pete? Yeah, no worries. Now, the way it works, you've got to go back in time and realize how um, mankind, if you like, the species, man, mm. how we developed over thousands and thousands, if not millions of years. The way it works is that the man provides protection for his family, namely his wife and his child, okay? And it's done through his family name, his house name. By the word house didn't mm. really refer to a building until about the 16th century. Oh, right. So house normally referred to the family, house, okay? Or it comes from a German name, a word, Husan. It's, I think it's pronounced. But uh, Husan would, this is going back 2,000 years, would refer to the family. Okay, so the man would have first title of the family. Okay, his word was law. Okay, this is where the terminology is that Englishman's home is his castle, mm. you know, this sort of stuff. I mean, there is no, the most powerful entity on the planet is man. Mm. Okay, that's where law comes from, man. In my house, I make the rules. So the man would provide protection um, for his wife and children and also uh, resources. Okay. So this is the reason why that a, uh, a a maiden a maiden is a woman who is unmarried. Okay, now a maiden is protected by her father's house or son fa mm. house. Thing, okay, so when the maiden marries the man, the father gives the daughter away. This we still do this today in in modern day marriage, mm. marriages, right? And then the maiden, the woman, would take the last name of the 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 man. Okay, that means that she's now protected by that. House name, okay, the family name. So the man is saying, you stay away from that woman. If you even look at that woman funny, they'll just be like a blood smear where you used to stand. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, right. right, no, right. That's how, that's, that's how that's, it's seen as, yeah. Yeah, and yeah. there's no higher court than that. Yeah. Right, and that's it. So the people who control the system have a major problem. They go, how do we get hold of the women and the children from the protection of the, of the man? Yeah. Okay, and they do this through the birth certificate, okay? So, now, technically, it's not the living, breathing men or women. So the way the legal system operates is they create a legal title. Mm. If you accept that legal title, they can then control you through commerce. Yeah. We can get into that later. So the way it works is when the, uh, the, the, the woman gives birth, the mother, okay, um, today she'll fill out a birth notification form, and she is the informant. So what she's actually doing is she's informing the state that she's just given birth. Now, it's even worse than that because in the form, it will refer to, um, there will be a form and it will say, what is the woman's maiden name? So the mother will be will give her maiden name. Mm. So because she's given her maiden name, she's not given the house name. She's, she's basically saying she's given birth out of wedlock. Mm. She's basically saying she's given birth to a child that is not protected by a man or the house. Okay. Now, in this house, the man has first title. Now, first title means the reason he gets given, by the way, it's the woman who decides this ultimately, mm. because think about it this way. When a, who makes the ultimate decision in a man and a woman relationship? It's the woman. She decides who she marries. It is the man who basically submits. He gets down on one knee mm. and he basically says, would you like to marry me? And it's the woman to decide. So she has the ultimate say. Now, when she joins the family group, she's, she's part of the family now, she gets second title. 
The reason why the man gets first title is because he he has to give up his life to protect the woman. He's, he's that's his duty. He's supposed to sacrifice himself to protect his family at all costs. Yeah. So for that, because he's going to give up his old, that's the ultimate thing he can give up his own life. He gets first title. The woman gets second title. And then after that, it's children and all the rest of it, all they done. So what the state is trying to do is to gain first title. And it does, they do this through the birth certificate. The woman's got second title. So the birth certificate is informant. So the, the mother is now an informant. She uses her maiden name. Sometimes they might change the terminology on the form. It might say uh, previous surname instead of maiden name. But previous surname is your maiden name. Yeah. Okay. By the way, surname means surety name, slave name. Your surf. Surf, surf yeah. It's yeah. surety. It's a combination of two words, surety and name. Surety means you are responsible for the debt. So surname, mm. surety name, right. debtor name. Okay? Wow. They've got you they got you even that. Got, yeah. 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 And it is the mistake most, most people do when they fill out a form mm. and they say, what's your surname? And you fill it in, you've accepted to be the surety for the debt. That's how they do it. Mm. So anyway, the birth certificate. So the mother fills it all out, fills all the details, signs it, blah, 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 blah. Now, that form, I am still trying to get to the absolute nitty gritty of this, but this birth noti notification form is then signed off with a by a registrar and there's a seal of a registrar that goes on that mm -hmm. document and technically this would be like the manufacturer's statement of origin the woman has created brand new life the new baby okay mm -hmm. um by the way um they won't usually refer to baby on these documents they will refer to a legal title normally child or infant mm -hmm. child written in all caps you know that's a legal name that's a legal title infant is another legal title mm -hmm. infant means he who cannot speak. So that's why you have an infantry, okay? Because the foot soldier cannot speak. He can't speak mm. to the general. He's an infantry. He cannot speak. So an infant, a baby, can't speak. Infant. It's a legal title. So the legal title is created with this birth certificate. Mm. And this is this birth, sorry, with the mother's uh, birth no notification form. So this birth notification form is like the manufacturer's statement of origin, which is, the, which is what you need to prove ownership of the thing. This then is taken by the state. The state uses this to basically set up a trust, okay? Because they'll take the child and put it into trust. They weigh the child, and they will calculate the weight of the child in gold, and they'll place that in credit form into the trust. They do other things as well. Depends on what family you are born to. They can calculate that, put that into trust. They can also calculate your share of all the minerals and uh, uh, everything that's on the planet. And they put that in there as well. It's quite convoluted, but they put mm. that into a trust and it's worth a few million pounds set up. Each one's different then. Each, Each one's different. Different, yeah. different value. They work it out. Correct. Different value. Who's working that out? Oof, it could be the registrar. Really? It could be him. Um, see, the, see, you've got to ask yourself, I mean, here's the thing. It's a mm. registrar. And you go, mm. hang on a minute. What's going on here? Mm. Because um, this is, you need a registrar when you start creating bonds. Yeah. So you go, oh, okay. So I'm, I'm moving, moving my chin here. So why have we got a registrar? Okay, let's touch on how bonds work. This might explain the birth certificate. Mm. So the way the bond works, let's say that I want to create a, a, a debt or something mm. like that. I can create a bond. And by the way, if I create a bond, uh, which is a debt, then my word is my bond. In other words, I am saying I will pay that back. Yeah. And because I'm a man and you're supposed to be honorable, your word is your bond, mm. that's supposed to be trust, trustworthy. So I will create a bond. This is how it used to be. I think it still goes on today. So many, many years, centuries ago, uh, a businessman or a man would create a debt, okay? And he would create the, the, uh, the, the paperwork and sign off on it, put the seal on it, all that sort of stuff, mm. create the bond. And what they would do is they would put it into a wooden box. Now, the wooden box would have two locks on it and two separate keys one made of silver one made of gold the two separate locks so the keys are not interchangeable so we'd go to the bank you put the bond into the box lock the box and then one of the keys would go to the bank and then one of the keys would go to the registrar who was allowed to create certificates a bond upon the bond mm. so the bond had value and then you could create certificates and then you could use those certificates as money in quotes okay so that's basically how it worked so what happens is, is the money the, the, the mother gives birth she creates this manufacturer statement of origin which is like a bond it's created it's mm. turned into a bond that's the main certificate or well not certificate 
Certificate's the wrong terminology because certificate means copy of. Yeah. So if it's certificate, it means copy of, and certificate comes from a higher authority. All right, so it's not really a certificate. So the first original document is made, manufactured statement of origin, then all certificates are made off that. Once the Vatican has created this Sesta KV Trust, well, technically it's a foreign situ trust they create. This, the, situ, the Sesta KV Trust is what the government controls. Once they've created this trust and you become of age, you could 16, they will use the child's signature to create credit. Mm. Okay, and then... Now, the problem is, is whenever you create credit, a debt is created on the other side. You cannot have credit without debt, and you cannot have debt without uh, debt without credit. Wherever there's a debtor, there's a creditor. Whenever there's a creditor, there's a debtor. So I'm going to just cut to the basics now. The way that government funds itself is it sells these birth certificates to the Vatican, simply put, and... It sells them for quite a bit of money. Uh, for example, I think a typical birth certificate um, is sold for somewhere between one and seven million dollars by the hospital. A QCIP number is added to it. Um, it's sold again to the banks. The banks buy them. Um, it's sold on the debt market because they know that these are worth a hundred million dollars. Okay, so the way that uh, governments fund themselves is through the uh, creation of credit of the people at an individual level, okay? They will use your signature. Every time you sign a document, they use that signature. They will securitize it, and they'll create new credit. That's what the national debt is. So the national debt is the debt that the government owes us back. Mm. Now, they don't want to pay us back. Um, so what they do is they actually sell this debt on the debt market, and they trick us to becoming the debtor as well as the creditor. This is where your birth certificate comes into play, the one that we have access to. There's two separate birth certificates, one that creates the credit and the one that actually is the debtor, the corporate one, the straw man. That you're you know. given and you operate from. That's yeah? right. Right, okay. So the one that creates mm. the credit is normally referred to as a certificate of live birth, and then the debtor one is called a birth certificate. And it's not you. It's the birth of your corporation. It's become the debtor. So that is responsible for paying it back. And they go, okay, then, well, how do they do that? Well, they create things called bills, uh, utility bills. <laughs> so mm. your credit is used by the government to create the gas and the electricity. That means the government's now in debt to you. They have to pay you back. They're the debtor. They've used your credit. They've got to pay you back. They don't want to. So they sell this debt to a utility company, which is actually a credit broker. You can look this up. Go and look it up. Really? Yeah, the credit yeah. brokers. See, a credit broker is a company that deals in debt. They sell, buy and sell debt. That's what a credit broker is. So the credit brokers. So they will actually buy this debt and they'll sell it to you and pretend it's a bill. They'll pretend that you, you're buying gas and electric. You're not. What you're doing is you're buying the debt that was created from your own credit that paid for the gas and electric in the first place. Then who would be paying for the gas and electric then? It's up to the government. I've paid for it. Mm -hmm. This, see, we use a credit debt system. Yeah. It's not money. Credit and debt has got nothing to do with money. In fact, the thing with the credit, maybe we should touch on credit. A lot of people get confused with credit. Mm. In trade, not commerce, in trade, credit normally symbolizes something of value. Yeah. You know, like we were talking earlier downstairs, that if I credit you, mm. if I think you're credible, this is where credit comes from, the word is credible, do I think you're credible? Do I think you're a man of your word? And if I think you are, then I will give you credit. So then every time you went to the bar and you ordered a beer and you put it on my tab, then I would allow you to have this credit. Okay, so you would owe me one credit yeah. per beer. Mm. So the credit has a value of one beer. And after 10 beers, you owe me 10 credits. Okay, so that's how it works in trade. Now, the system that we operate today, we still use credit and debt, but the credit has no value at all. It used to symbolize uh, like a silver coin or a gold coin, that sort of thing. Okay, it used to have a real intrinsic value. In fact, if you look at the notes that we use today, it says um, five pounds, like a five pound note. Look at a five pound, it says five pounds. Five pounds of what? Well, it used to be five pounds of sterling silver. That's such sterling silver's long gone. And we're all passing around these notes of debt, of debt and credit, and the credit has no value. None. Zero value. Now, when you understand this, then you understand that there is no debt then. 
Because if the credit's worthless, then how can I be in debt when the credit has nothing? So like going yeah. back to the beers, yeah. let's say there's 10 credits, but there's no beers. Well, what am I supposed, what are you supposed to give me then? Yeah. If you're in debt to me for 10 credits and there's no beers, there's no beers attached to it, what are you going to give me? Nothing. And you go, well, hang on a minute. If you will yeah. figure that out, then you go, what's my mortgage then? Because yeah. aren't I supposed to owe 250000 or whatever the mortgage is? It has no value. The credit has no value at all. Now, when you understand that, you think, well, why am I making payments? And when you understand that, you can even figure out that you can actually pay your mortgage off with a silver coin. But payments don't, <laughs> that doesn't exist either, though, does it? No. So, so no. So the whole, the whole game is without any intrinsic value. Correct. Correct. It's There's no thin air. Thin air meets thin air. It's just, thin air meets thin air. You, know, you promise to pay. Right. It's all that's going on. But then if you don't pay with this, the, the imaginary value, mm -hmm. then they will come and seize your actual objects that, you know. Yes, because you consented. You agreed to it. Yeah. This is where people don't understand about registration. Mm. So if you registered your house, you've agreed to this. You've, that's part of it. Okay, let me explain how mortgages operate. Mm. And then this might make sense. So we have to, just, we have to uh, figure out the difference between private credit and public credit. Okay, there's two different jurisdictions going on here. So private credit is created from you, your signature. You are the man. Well, women can also create credit as well. So, it's, you know, it's not just a male thing. So men and women can create credit, uh, adults, over the age of consent. You can create credit. That's private credit, okay, mm -hmm. especially in this system. That's private credit. So you go into a mortgage company, okay, and you'll sit down. And what they will do is they'll, you'll fill out their forms. You'll sign, normally with blue ink, okay, because that means you're the creditor. So you'll sign in blue ink. They'll normally give you a nice fancy pen to make sure you sign in the right color. And you go, oh, this is a nice pen. And you sign with their pen. Anyway, what you're doing is you're allowing the mortgage company to dip into your trust fund for 250000 whatever the mortgage is. In other words, they're basically creating new credit okay, in your name. Now, technically, at that point, that means you can just buy the house. The house is yours. You make no payments. It's done. Thank you. That's my house now. No payments, nothing. No stamp duty, nothing. But what the mortgage company are doing, they're tricking you. So what they'll do is say, okay, we're going to take your private credit, and we're going to give this private credit to the Bank of England, which is a privately owned bank, and we're going to turn it into what is called public credit. Now, the public credit operates at the lowest jurisdiction within the system. That's the jurisdiction of the pauper. Mm -hmm. This is the jurisdiction of uh, members of the public. That gives you a clue straight away. Member, membership. Maritime mm -hmm. law, you're now operating in a jurisdiction. What's going on here? So the Bank of England will then give you Bank of England notes, promissory notes, okay? That's public credit. Now, the thing is, is because you signed all the documentation and everything, you've agreed to mm -hmm. pay the Bank of England back. <laughs> it's your own credit. Mm -hmm. Now, the Bank of England is not only do they want that back, but they want it back at interest. Yeah. <laughs> so you're <laughs> now, <laughs> remember, you created it with your credit. Mm -hmm. All you've done is you've given it to the Bank of England and they've created it into public credit and given it back to you. And now you've got to pay public credit back at interest. Okay. Now, what they also do is say, well, we've just lent you the money. Well, it's not money, but, mm. you know, we've just lent you the money. Uh, so what we're going to do is that house you want to buy, it's going to have to be registered. So you have to register it with land registry. So it's safekeeping. You don't own that house. <laughs> it's sitting in land registry until you pay that debt back. But it gets even worse. You can't pay that back because you're using notes of debt. Nothing is ever bought. It's always promised to pay. Mm. So if I give you a £5 note, it's a promise to pay. I'll pay you one day, but I never do. No one ever does. Nothing is ever paid for. That means nothing is ever bought, and that means nothing is ever owned. Okay. So it gets worse than that. So even if you pretend you've paid off the debt you know, 25 years later and you've just paid off with promissory notes, technically you still haven't paid for the house. But what you've also done is you've put your house into trust with the land registry. And also, because you're illiterate, you don't notice the terminology that's written on that deed. So if you read the deed, you'll find that um, it will have your corporate name on there, your dead entity name. It's not you. It'll be Mr. Smith. Okay. Mm -hmm. There'll be a legal title on there. It'll call you something like um, register, uh, sorry, uh, statutory resident or statutory tenant, something like that. That's a legal title. It's not you. And then you might even find that you've just got a lot number. And if it's written in all caps, L-O-T, that's lease of title. So you, haven't, you don't own anything. And another thing, you probably bought um, real estate. That's not property. 
So real estate basically means royal status. So real estate means that you have bought the right to live on the king's land. The king owns it. You're a serf. Mm. <laughs> and the average person thinks you bought property. No. Look at it this way, right? If you literally did own your property, you own your house, and you own the land, why do you need planning permission? Yeah, exactly. Who are you asking permission from if you own it? You see the problem here? Again, it's a mindset thing, isn't it? You know, it's mindset. That's what you said earlier. It's mindset. Mm. It's literally in your face. But because most people are so brainwashed, they don't see it. It's like driver's license. Well, what does license mean? Asking permission. Well, hang on a minute. Well, if it's my car, mm. then who am I asking permission from to drive my car in the first place? If I have to ask permission, then that means there's someone above me with a higher authority. Mm. So I've lost my sovereign status again. I'm a serf. I'm a slave. It's in your face, but people have got to wake up. Because they so by that you don't own the car then. No, you don't. Because I had a big one with uh, you know, with, I talked about this with Gary Fraun, yes. a mate of mine, and then this guy called Black Belt Barrister did a video <laughs> response to it. <laughs> this video is no different. Take a brief look at this clip, and then I'll explain. When you have a vehicle and you register it with the state, the state owns it. When you register the vehicle, the vehicle then becomes property of the state. You then, as the as the owner, have now changed. They've changed the rules on the V5. You're no longer the owner, you're the registered keeper. Now, with respect, this video grossly misunderstands the fundamental differences between the registered keeper of a vehicle and its legal owner. But the problem is it's putting this out as a statement of fact and so many people will believe it because these days so many people will believe something on social media if it's said with enough conviction. Now whilst I continually tell you that this is not legal advice, at least you know I am a practicing barrister. Just saying, look, I'm a barrister and this is how it goes. But what, what's your opinion on that? Because it seems to me as though there's one side is like the legalese, the kind of yes. the, um, the matrix interpretation of it but then there's this side which you're talking about and gary's talking about which understands the way that that game works and actually you can exempt from it or you can play that game you know? yes um, so so do we or do we not own our cars okay here's the technical thing right when i try and explain the system to people the system is not legitimate mm. not so a lot of people start panicking oh my god i don't know my house oh my god i don't know my car no you were scammed Okay, there was no, where's your informed consent? For a contract to be lawfully and legally binding, there must be informed consent. Yeah. The other person can't hide information from you. Like if I bought a car from you and it had done 250,000 miles and you wound it back to 50, and you didn't tell me and I bought it from you, that's not a legitimate contract. Mm. Right? So the same thing with registering, all right? If you were not told, like when a mother gives birth and all of us do, if she was not told that her child is going to be placed into trust and become a serf for the rest of her life, you know, and, and lose 95% of the, the wealth that that child creates, it's not a legitimate it's contract. It's not informed consent. Yeah. Not informed consent. Where's yeah. my informed consent? Yeah. So going back to ownership, right? Here's the thing with ownership. Just because you own something doesn't mean you own it. And, and people <laughs> yeah, go, what? Yeah. What? <laughs> yeah. Right. Mm. There's a clue. Ownership. Whenever you hear the, sh the word ship at the end of something, it's telling you maritime law. Mm. Now, maritime law, what maritime law is, is basically you are entering a vessel where there's a set of rules and there is a captain. In other words, there's someone else who controls those rules. Okay. So it's an ownership. So that means you're entering a vessel with someone else. So you've got to say, well, hang on a minute, what's the rules? Mm -hmm. And give me the name of the captain. So ownership, just giving you the clue. So within ownership, there's other things that the average person doesn't understand. Title and rights. So you've got ownership, title and rights. So this is what the legal system does, is they split the title of things. And the average person does not spot it. Yeah. And they think they own their car. Well, <laughs> look at it this way. Let's say you're a property mm -hmm. owner, you're a landlord. And you let's pretend we use money and let's pretend you own the house. Okay, let's just for that. But you rent it out. Technically, you're the owner of that property, okay, the house, okay. But the tenant has the right to live there. The owner doesn't, the landlord doesn't, the landlord has given away that right, okay? The tenant has that right. So this is the splitting of the title. Mm. Okay? So this is done all the time, but the average person doesn't spot it. For example, if I go into a cafe and I order a coffee. Well, they're going to give me a 
mug, yeah, yeah. and a and a what you know, and a saucer and a spoon. I haven't bought that. I don't own that. I have bought the coffee inside. That is mine. Okay, but the mug and the and the sp- the spoon has to go back. Didn't you also give an example of like teddy bear with a kid? Is that not similar? Oh no! Oh. You, I remember you said um, you know when when a parent gives a teddy bear to a kid, oh the kid thinks uh, they own the, the teddy bear, but it's actually the the, the, the parents because they've got the receipt of it. You know yes. that kind of thing. I mean, Correct. Yeah, exactly right. Yes, because yeah. the yeah. parents bought it. Yeah. So it's basically the parents' teddy bear. Yeah. And but the child thinks they own it. They do. And it's the same thing with the car. You same think the that car. you own it, but actually someone else has it because it's in a trust. It's being put in a trust. Yeah. So what it is is the way it works with a car is that um, every th- here's the thing anything with a serial number it's not just a car yeah. so anything with a serial number mobile phone laptop anything your fridge if it's got a serial number on it you don't own it mm. okay the way it works is that serial number is attached to what is called a manufacturer statement of origin so whenever something is made for the first time a car laptop fridge whatever there is a certificate uh, or not, not a certificate, but a manufacturer statement of origin. That's like a deed, the original deed, the original declaration that this thing has been created. Okay? You're, you are supposed to get that. So when you buy the car, you're supposed to get that form, that, that document. You supposed, it's, in fact, it's worth the same as the car. So this manufacturer statement of origin, you're supposed to get it. And if you have that, then you own that car outright. Because everything is on that document. You have the rights, you have the title, you have full ownership. What's the name of that document, sorry? Manufacturer's Statement of Origin. Okay. So it used to be, we used to have that? Back in the, yeah, right. they're still created now. Every, yeah. every single brand new car still has one. Back in the day, you could you would get, if you bought a Model T Ford, for example, you got that with the Model T Ford. There's your document to prove it's yours, okay? Think of it like a deed, mm. Simple, simply put, superior deed, or a loyal title, if you mm. like. So, because of this document, is that's the that's the creation of the thing. Mm. Now, what happens is is that that document goes to the country that you find yourself operating within. Now, a country is not the land. Okay, country operates as a corporation. It exists on paper only. Mm. The UK is a corporation, same as McDonald's. It only exists on paper. But if you are operating within that corporation, okay, then you will register your car with that corporation so what happens is is that manufacturer statement of origin basically goes to the treasury the treasury sell it make pots of money because you don't even know it exists Mm. and then they will create another document which is certificate of conformity the certificate of conformity then goes to the dealer of the car you know you're selling a lamborghini shop you're going to buy a brand new lamborghini and the dealer has this certificate of conformity so because the average person has no clue what they're doing, the dealer will say, would you like us to register your car? Of course, the average person goes, okay, because mm-hmm. they don't know what they're doing. Yeah. So, of course, the car's registered, and then that certificate of conformity then goes to the DVLA. The DVLA is a corporation. It's operating as a trust. So that document is placed into the trust. Now, here's where it gets even worse. Because you're the grand tour of this mm-hmm. trust, right, it means you're supposed to be the beneficiary. But they do the dirty and they do the paperwork and they switch positions. So the the way it's supposed to work, you're the grantor. You put this document in there, so the car is technically in trust. The um, make that makes the DVLA trustees. You're the beneficiary. That means that the uh, trustee is supposed to handle the running of the car, fill it with petrol, mm-hmm. service costs, speeding tickets, all that sort of stuff. But they do the dirty. They do a spate and switch, and they say, "Would you like to be the trustee, and we'll be the beneficiary?" And they go, "Okay." Mm-hmm. Because no one reads the forms, mm. no one understands what's written, they just fill it out. So you're now the trustee. And what happens is you will get a document, and all it says on there is you are now the registered keeper. That's it. You've given up all the other, you've given up your rights, you've given up ownership, all the rest of it. It's all gone. Other people have this now. Mm. You are now just the registered keeper. It even says on the UK logbook, which is a V5, I think it is. It even says it, even if it is written in all caps, it even says this is not proof of ownership. So at that point, if you can't figure it out, I'm going, mm. I can't help you. Now, but what? you're still liable for everything that happens. Though, Absolutely. Because that, that's the bait and switch, isn't it, right? That's the bait and switch. Because if you were to have an accident or, you know, something happened with that car, or if you were to yep. sell the car, who would yep. then get the money if you were to sell the car then? Ah, and you don't sell the car. You're selling the title. <laughs> <laughs> You're selling the I've never been so cross-eyed trying to, like, trying to process so much information at once, you know. <laughs> Um, yeah, yeah you know. it's 
no. you're selling it you're selling the, the right to use mm. you're selling the title you're selling the logbook so all you're doing is basically right. you no longer want to use government property anymore mm. Do you have the right? You're the registered keeper, so you have the right to use it. Yeah. So you say, I don't want to use this Ferrari anymore because it's owned by the government. So you just sell it to someone else. So someone else now has the right to use government property. Mm. You're buying the right to use. Basically, you're the registered keeper. So how would you buy it outright then? Once it's once it's in that position, you know? right? Now this is where it gets complicated. If you, as long as you know how the game is played, mm. um, as long as you understand everything is commerce. This is mindset stuff again, right? Mm. If people think that government is a physical thing, is a real thing, then you're going to lose this game. If you understand that government is just a corporation, the same as McDonald's, you can play the game. In commerce, uh, there's several rules in commerce. Don't, don't need to go through them all now, but one of them is you have the right to terminate any contract. It's very simple. One of the other rules in commerce is there's no involuntary servitude. Right? You, cannot be a, you cannot be a slave mm. unless you consented. Yeah. If you agree to be a slave, that's your choice, right? You can't be forced to be one. You have mm. to consent. The entire system, the entire system of commerce is based on consent. Now, in consent, I can actually mm. withdraw my consent and I can terminate contract. So if I'm going to terminate a contract, then I have the right to do that. Then I can terminate a contract with a DVLA. I can say, you know what? I don't want to register my car with DVLA anymore. I'd like it mm. back. Thank you very much. And then what you would do is you would request the manufacturer's statement of origin and the certificate of conformity to be returned back to you as you are the registered keeper. You ain't going to give are it people to people doing this? Well, well, I've got people on it. Yeah. Uh, we are working together. This is a numbers game. Yeah. Yeah. Everything's a numbers game, right? I will tell you exactly how it works. For example, you can pay your mortgage off with a silver coin. Do you think that the mortgage company are going to go, oh, well, thanks mm. for receiving the silver coin. Yeah, yeah they're going to dig their heels in, aren't they? Of course. They? They're going to bluff you. Mm. Most of the, see, let's talk about remedy for just touch on it. Yeah. The thing with remedy is that a lot of people are trying to find remedy to, for situations, right? Mm. And they'll get something and they'll follow the remedy to the letter and then it doesn't work. Now, here's the thing the mistake they are making is they're blaming it on the remedy. They think the remedy is no good. I go, no, what you're doing is you're dealing with a criminal person on the other side of this remedy mm. who's lying to you. They're not accepting the remedy. There's nothing wrong with a remedy. Remedy is perfect. Three-letter process, notices, all affidavits, it's perfect. Nothing wrong with your, you've got to stand your ground. As a sovereign, you will know this because your paperwork, paperwork is the extension of your authority. So you know where the authority is coming from. It's coming from me. Mm. So if someone says, um, no, that paperwork's not going to work, who the hell's, you, you want to know who that is. Give me the name of the person who says my paperwork's no good. Mm. I want to know who he is. So... So you go for the man, like you said earlier. Go for the man every time. Billy, Billy Joe. Or whatever, yes, go know. Billy Bob. Yeah, Billy Bob. Go Billy Bob. Yeah. yeah. So you can go straight for them. Go straight and for them. And they won't have an answer because there is no one. That's the thing, Correct. right? So then at that point, it becomes null and void, is it? Correct. Right, they see. become default. In yeah. default. See, this is the thing. People have got to wake up. Look at the documents you receive in the post. Mm. Look for a signature. Is there a wet ink signature? No. Is there even a name anymore? Mm. No, it'll say legal department, signed off by legal department. And I go, what, legal department? What, there's someone working there? His name's called legal department? Mm. What does he look like? Can I shake hands with legal department? Hello, Mr. Legal Department. Mm. But people are so far gone, so far brainwashed, they don't even spot this. So, yeah, you go after the person, you say, how dare you not accept my paperwork? Mm. See, the highest document there is in this entire system is your affidavit. There's no higher document than that. So if I submit my affidavit and they say, oh, we're not going to accept it, what do you mean? You give me the name of the person who's not going to accept my affidavit. Right? This is how you, you don't take any mess in. So, again, it's a mindset thing. There's too many doormats out there. There's too many people who are just going to say, oh, well, I tried, I lost. They didn't take mm. me paperwork. Keep fighting. Some of my remedies have been like a year long. I'm in a remedy right now. We're into four years now. You keep fighting. But anyway, going back to the car. So you serve notice, okay? You're not asking, but sovereigns don't ask. We're not pleading. We don't make appeals, okay? There's no voting. We don't vote. <laughs> we tell you how it is. Mm. I serve notice on you. So I'll serve notice on the DVLA. You've got 30 days to give me back my manufacturer statement of origin and my COC. Mm. If you don't, you're going to be in default. In what? Default of my notice. Because I served my notice. Mm. They have to do it. Yeah. So if they don't, they are now in default of this notice. Okay. Now, defaults are very, very powerful. The system uses defaults upon you all the time, like parking tickets. 
ultimately they don't care about the parking ticket. They're hoping that you will ignore their notice mm. and then you will be in default of their notice and then they can create a case upon the default. And then you go to court and you show your paperwork. I've done this. You can do it. If people ignore your notices, I go, great, fantastic. You ignore my notices all day long, pal. But you're now in default of my notices. Mm. I can create a case upon that. I think someone's done this with the council tax. So instead of attacking the council tax directly, you mm. serve notice on the council and say, well, can you please provide me with the contract where I have to pay you? Remember, it's commerce now. Remember, a council is a corporation, no different than McDonald's. Mm. So for me to pay a council, which is a corporation, it has to be a contract. It has to be. They can't say, oh, there isn't one. Well, that's extortion then. Mm. Okay, so you serve notice on the council and say, you've got 30 days to give me the, the contract proof of obligation. And if they ignore you, that's great, fantastic. And they can't, that's the thing. They, they can't. They can't. So with the car then, so, yeah. you are, so when you said serving notice, what, yes. so what does that look like then? You're basically, it's, it's a, well, you're offering, your, that's your contract to them, is it not? Yes. So you're, so you're saying, I want all this back. And if you don't, then you're actually going to have to pay the penalty that I'm setting within this Correct. Um, paperwork. Correct. You know? It's your contract. So you put it's that on them. Word. And then they are guessing they could try and not do it or whatever. That oh, generally yeah. happens, right? But They'll bluff you just you. have to, a mindset thing again, you believe that that is your right to put that to them just as they do to us. Absolutely. Sort of stuff. You have to be strong in that and enforce that. And if they don't, you can actually take them to your own court, can't you? Yes, that's correct. Now, here's the thing. People have got to stop using emails, phone calls, websites, all of that, texts. Get away from that. Get into the written. Okay. For this, though, yeah. Yeah, yeah for yeah. anything. Oh, for anything. Anything. Get back into writing your own paperwork. Right. Now, the reason you do this is because the courts operate on paperwork only. It doesn't matter what you say in that room. As long as your paperwork is strong, now I will do massive air quotes here because the court system is totally corrupt. doesn't mean you're going to win. But if you've got the best paperwork in that room, if you're going up against someone and their paperwork is not as good as yours, you're going to win. Big air quotes. Um, so anyway, paperwork. You've got to use your own paperwork. Okay. Do not fill out anyone's form. Do not fill out their forms. Corporations will offer um, complaints departments. They don't do this to try and help you. <laughs> they do this so you get pulled into their jurisdiction so they can control the situation. Mm -hmm. And if you enter into that jurisdiction, they will get you to fill out their forms. If you're filling out someone else's form, you're already contracting. You've lost. Yeah, you're on their contract. Yeah, You're done. Yeah, You're done. So you don't fill out their forms. This is another way you can get rid of speeding tickets. Is that... Um... This is good, yeah. <laughs> this, is, <laughs> this is where everyone watches like... <laughs> Yeah, now, car, car park. I guess car parking fines and let me say it into the mic. So I'm guessing car parking fines and speeding tickets is, is you know, you said earlier, you said um, start off with something kind of low level and easy to do. Um, you know, TV license, TV license, car parking fines, speeding fines. So can we go through? So let's let's go. Let's yeah. let's hit home on one of those then. So let's say you get a which one did you mention there? Car parking. Yeah, it depends on the, which sort of ticket you're getting. Yeah. All right, because it's pro. I'm going to use air quotes again. Uh, private and then there's council it's still technically private um because the council is a private corporation all right now the council one is a bit more difficult to do uh it can be done uh, i would to uh, i would say if you want to know how to tackle a council tax a, a council yes. parking ticket um observation deck he's doing a great video it's about an hour long he goes through it and he'll show you it's not easy mm. um and it might, might not even be worth your time because it's like 25 quid and I can't be bothered. <laughs> uh, but if you want to do it because you, you know, you're angry, mm. do. by the way, I've done that. I've actually spent more time <laughs> going after <laughs> someone over the most trivial amount of yeah. money just because I'm angry. Yeah, I know. Yeah, of course you do. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a, a principle. Thing, you know? Yeah, it's a principle of the <laughs> yeah. thing. How dare you? Yeah. Um, but the, 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 a private ticket is a lot easier to do. Now, a private parking ticket, first of all, you've got to learn the, um, the language. Yeah. They can't send you a fine. See, a fine indicates a breach of contract. Okay, Fine is not lawful. You don't get fined in law. In law, you would pay for damages. Right? Is this because there's no victim here? Is this the reason? Well, what it is, is the, the fine is a legal term. Okay. Think of it like uh, sports. 
Yeah. So if you do something in football illegal or something, you're going to get fined. You know, if you do something bad, it's like being offered a red card and we're not even playing football. Yes, yes, that kind of thing. That's exactly right. Mm. Exactly. Think of it like that. If if you're if you're playing football, you're on a team. Yeah. You've accepted the contract, haven't you? Yes. You're walking onto the pitch. If you were to pitch. go up to someone on the street and yeah. do that, it makes no sense. Yeah. No, I'm not even playing. I'm <laughs> yeah. not in this game. So that's, that's effectively what a fine is then. Fine. Yes. Whenever you okay. hear fine, yeah. it means you've entered into the agreement yeah. and you've breached a pot policy of that agreement and now you have to pay the fine now parking tickets again it depends on the situation let's say you've got to look at it two ways as well let's say someone parks on your personal driveway without yeah. your permission you would have the right to say oh what are you doing you, you, I can, you owe me some money okay you just damages so you can go after the person right who's parked on your driveway they didn't have permission for that if it's private land they didn't have that permission so same thing for a private car park so if you park there and they say that you're supposed to pay one pound per hour and you decide not to and you park there for two hours then the only amount of money that that company can come after you for is two quid because mm. that's what you owe now that's what they're supposed to do they're supposed to say, oh, you parked on our land and, uh, you, you know, it's the two quid and all the rest of it. And if you say, no, I'm not going to do it, they're supposed to go through the process. Yeah. Then the court is supposed to decide and then issue the fine. But what's happening is a lot of these parking companies are issuing fines immediately. And you go, you can't do that. You're violating the, the product. You're violating. It's criminal, isn't it, to do it that? It is. It is. Because, okay, so I parked in um, a uh, petrol station car park and I didn't read. They changed it from an hour and a half to 30 minutes. I didn't notice, right? And um, I got sent, yeah, 60, two 60 pound fines because I did it oh. like twice in a week because I didn't realize, you know. Yep. And, um, and, you know, I'm even using their, you know, services and I'm getting fined. I know. You know. It's ridiculous, right? Anyway, I was getting emotional about it at the time and angry about <laughs> it. But, you know, it does actually say, though, in like when you go in, there was a little placard that actually says 30 minutes only. That's private property, right? The petrol Correct. station. So am I, therefore, entering into their contract and I can't do anything at that point? Technically, yes. Yeah. Technically. Now, here's the thing. That's called what is that is what is called an open notice. Yeah. Now, as long as the notice is clear for you to see, you know, then if you can see it and you still decide to park on the land, then you've accepted the notice. By the way, I've got a notice on my front door that says uh, 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 people have got to have an appointment before knocking on the door, and it, underneath it says failure to comply is five hundred quid. So if someone knocks on my door and they haven't made an appointment, then immediately by knocking on the door, they've agreed to pay me 500 quid. Mm. So you open the door and say, what's your name? Where do you work? Fine. How do you want to pay this 500 quid? Because <laughs> <laughs> they've accepted the notice. So I've done that by driving into the car park and, and effectively seeing the, the sign, even though I didn't see yeah. the sign. Yeah. But the thing is, is they can't initiate. See, they're bound mm. by re legislation. They're mm. bound by regulation, you see. Yeah. There's a policy. There's a procedure they have to follow. But these parking companies aren't doing it. Now, we have on the website called the sovereignproject.live, what we've set up is what is called the Sovereign Wiki. Now, on there is a uh, parking ticket remedy. It goes through mm. that, and it's worked. So it depends on the parking ticket itself, um, but there's some information on there that explains it, it goes into more detail. But it's a bit more complicated than you know what yeah. we can go into now. Okay. Oh, Fair one enough. thing I would add is whenever you deal with a corporation, yeah, um, add your fees your costs so what it is yeah people wow. forget this so if you're dealing say you get a document through the post yeah and you go well hang on a minute i don't like this i'm going to reply to it we'll charge for the reply so i charge 500 quid so that's my administration costs remember it's all commerce i'm i'm running a business so, so you, you're basically making yourself into a corporation. Yeah. Well, you are. Well, you are a corporate because they so made me a corporation. You've made me a corporation. Yes, therefore, the I'm going to use my rights as a corporation. I'm the director to, to to send you back my my fees and my yes. Yeah. Okay. That's how you should That's look at it. That's how you play it. it right. That's how you play so you the don't, game. You don't play the game by being a, 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 saying I'm a human. I'm a free man. You've got to play avatar meets avatar, corporation meets corporation, yes. and that's the trap of the the free man on the land stuff, isn't it? It is. Shall I just go straight into the speeding fine then? Yeah, so let me. Let's, yeah, let's so so that's that. that's sort of similar then, isn't it? Like a speeding fine. Um, I guess they don't have really have the right to send you a fine because it's not enshrined in any real law, human law, natural law. There's no victim. Correct. So when they're sending you a fine. It's an offering. It's saying, do you want to play this game? It's a yellow card. Are you playing football? And you're like, I'm not even playing football. I'm not playing that game. 
that should be the mindset, shouldn't it? But a lot of people panic. They think that they've they've broken a real law mm -hmm. that hasn't, even though it doesn't really exist, and they just panic and they and they they pay it. Correct. So what's really going on then, and what's the what's the remedy? Right. Okay. Well, first of all, like I think we mentioned earlier, it's all commerce. It's just corporations dealing yeah. with corporations. All of it. Okay. And I think we mentioned the free schedule. Okay. This is why we were doing the free schedule. So treat it like that. You're the director of your corporation. Mm. So if you start dealing with these people. I mean, the way I got rid of, I've got rid of a few parking tickets is normally what happens is my cost exceeds their cost, and then they give up. That's car parking, though. Car park, yeah, yeah car park. Yeah. And I did this with uh, other, I've done this with electric board, electricity board as well, years ago when I was mm. learning this. I was just getting, you know, mm. you know, I was a little yellow belt, if you like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm just, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm not all there yet, you know, but... Mm. I mean, I got rid of a speeding ticket years and years ago, and I, I, it was retracted, and I thought I won. What what I know now, I should have just sued the police and said, no, 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 this took me nine months to get rid of, and I sent several letters, £500 a pop. So even though back then I got rid of the speeding ticket, I thought I'd won, I should, I should have carried on. I said no. But anyway, I didn't know what I know now back then. Mm. So, um, speeding, yeah, so I've got to explain what's going on. So, your birth certificate is a corporation, okay? You are a ghost director of it. Okay, ghost director. The reason why you're a ghost director is because you haven't claimed it. Okay? You haven't claimed the birth certificate sitting there. Everything applies to that birth certificate. Every time you get a document through the post, it is not your name. It might look like it, it is not. If all caps. All caps. It can be all caps. It can be lowercase as well. They're doing that now because obviously it used to be in all caps, but now people are waking up to the all caps. Is that to do with the fact that it's it's referring to capital and your, your entity, your corporate entity is worth, is, is worth capital? Well, yeah. Well, the way, it, the way the way it came from is maritime law. Yeah. So the way it worked is in maritime law, if you were a passenger on board a ship, I mean, we're going back several thousand years, mm. if you were on the ship, the captain, by the way, the way, the name captain comes from capital. He is responsible mm. for the capital on board ship, captain. That's where the name comes from, right? So if you're a living, breathing man or woman and you're, you're boarding ship because you want to travel you know, across the sea, the captain is responsible for you, all right? Now, the problem is, is how do you put a value on a life? You can't. So the captain says, I can't put a value on you because if you die, how, how, what are you worth? I can't value you, okay? So the, the, the captain says, one, the best thing I can do is I can say, look, if you do die, I will pay for your funeral costs. You know, or if you're injured, I'll pay for that, okay? So the captain says, right, that's the best I can do. I will cover that. Now, your name written in uh, title case English is you the living. And the captain says, well, I can't use that because that's referring to you the living. So I, what I will do is I'll write it in all caps. So the all caps name was supposed to represent you as a entity, if you like. You're not the living, mm. but that was the legal fiction that he would ensure, if you like. So that it, that's where it came from. And then today, that all caps name refers to a um, legal entity. Yeah, yeah, us. Us. Yeah, the ghost director. The ghost director, yeah. Mm. It's a corporation. We are the de directors of that corporation, okay? Now, the thing with the all caps name... Is technically, if you are using English, anything written in all caps is an acronym. So you're not even supposed to read it as a name. You're supposed to recognize it as a name. There's a difference between a language you read and a sign language. So a sign language is something where you recognize, like hieroglyphics. So, for example, if you saw a picture of a cat, then you would see it, recognize it as a cat, and go, oh, that means cat. Whereas a, a language that you read, like English, you would have C-A-T, which would symbolize sounds, K-A-T, so you would read it like music. Mm -hmm. So that's the difference between reading a language and recognizing a language, like sign language. This is another way they trick you with the paperwork. Mm -hmm. They are sending you sign language in the post, but you, you are reading it as English, which you shouldn't be doing. Is that to do with like the sign, the signature, signature? Correct, sign of nature. Sign of nature. Yes. So your signature or sign of nature is not supposed to be read. You're not supposed to read it. You're supposed to recognize it. Like Prince. You know Prince the pop star and he had that symbol. So you meant to do a squiggle then. Yeah. You're supposed <laughs> yeah. to do that's what, You can put any squiggle you want. I used to always do a squiggle. No, <laughs> you're not supposed to read it. It could be cat. You could do a little right, cat okay. and pixie dust or whatever mm. you want. It's your sign. So that's why it's called a sign of nature. Or sign against the nature of the document. But then, but then, but then, if you've put that sign nature, sign of nature in a box. So here's another trick that these people will do with forms. Mm. They will ask you to sign in a box. 
Well, if it's in a box, that's the four corners rule. It's not part of the document. It's off the page. It's like mm-hmm. signing a blank check. So people are reading documents. Remember, the documents that are sent in the post are not official contracts. They're articles. You go, well, what does article mean? Artificial. You see, the system, the legal system, deals in colour of. So it's colour of law. It's a uh, uh, warrant of colour, or, you know, it's uh, courts of colour. Artificial, colour of. So they will send you articles, okay? So it's not real f- official documents. So going back to the signature, the sign of nature, you can make any squiggle you want. Mm. Now, what you would do, if it's an official contract document, then what you would do is you'd write your name underneath in, in title case English. Because obviously that's what you're supposed to read. So an honourable man, you do the squiggle, mm. and you might not recognise it, but then you would print your name underneath in title case English, and that's how it's supposed to be. The documents you receive in the post are articles. They're not official contracts in any way, shape or form. Why? Because there's no signature on them. You don't even know who sent it. Mm. If you do not know who sent it, then how can you ascertain obligation? You can't. How can I ascertain, ascertain if I'm obligated to reply if I don't know the name of the person who sent it? Does it need a person then? Can it not just be done from an organisation? No, it's a legal fiction. It's a dead entity. But we are dead entities. No, the, the corporation is. The, the, we're not. We're the living breathing. But they're talking to the, to the dead entity. They're talking to the legal fiction corporation, your birth certificate, between yeah. one and another. But here's, look, there's nothing yeah. technically wrong with corporations, technically. You can, I can have a corporation, you can have a corporation. But if we're in contract with each other, I can have a company called Pete's Company, yeah. and you can have your, your company, right? And we can trade. It's not a problem. Mm. Now, if we've agreed to be in contract, and I'm sending you documentation, don't you think I'd sign it? Of course I would. Yeah. And if you were sending me one, I, you would sign it. So mm. I know it's you. Oh, it's come from you. Okay, not a problem. But the documents we're receiving from these uh, corporations, there is no signature. Why? Because the people sending it don't want to be liable. They're hiding behind the legal fiction corporation. Well, no, that's not good enough. If I'm a director mm. of a corporation and I'm receiving documentation from another corporation, I either want the director to sign it mm. or at the very least one of his employees... So I know who sent it. Now, the thing is, is what they're doing, they'll do another another dirty trick. Council tax do this all the time. So what they'll do is they will put PP next to the name. Little PP, right? Well, that basically, it's actually Latin. I can't remember what it is, but it means by proxy. Mm. So what that means is the name that is being printed is not the same as the person making the signature. That, that means that someone else has signed by proxy wow. for the name, right? Now you think, well, hang on a minute. Well, what have I got then? Mm. I've got a document here that's got a signature with no name and a name with no signature. So do I have a lawfully binding contract? No, I don't. Mm. But they trick you because they put that little PP there and the average person doesn't even notice it, doesn't even spot it. They don't even know what it is. So you could respond to that and say, who is this from? Yes. And are you liable for... Yes, who is yeah. this? I'll yeah. say it's PP. Unless you've agreed in yeah. advance, if, unless you've agreed to this, is it? yeah, it's not a problem, I will accept PP signatures. Yeah. If you haven't agreed to that, I'm sending it back mm. with your fee yeah. schedule. So, yeah. no, I'm not dealing with that. And charging 500 quid for the administration cost because you're running a business. You're the director of this corporation. You've got people who've got to get into this. So then going back to the, the speeding fine yep. then, so could you then do that? Could you then just come from your corporation, you get sent a speeding fine. Yep. You could then what send a notice back to them to say, I don't accept this, this isn't part of real law, or and then say, for my time, I want £500 for every letter I have to send back yes, to you. Yes, very simple. Well, well okay, well, let's, let's, let's take a step back from the speeding. Mm, you, yeah. you have to understand what's going on with speeding, right? There's right. No, there is no law ever yeah. regarding speeding. Yeah. No speeding laws ever, and there can never be, mm. ever. Why? Because the roads are owned by us. We all share the road, okay? It's common land, okay? Common to all. So we all have the use of. Now, if we all share it and we all have the use of it, that means that one man cannot make policy and apply it onto you. What about the council? Legal fiction, dead entities. What's it got to do with me? Now... But aren't you entering into the contract by having your driving license? Now you're getting it. You know, so aren't you kind of by other layers yes. trapped, entrapped? So then when you do try and send notice that I don't accept that fine, you've already accepted you, it several yes. stages before, no? Yes, correct, 100%. That's how they do it. 
This is how it works. Yeah. What have you done? You've registered your car, didn't you? You've registered it with DVLA. Yeah. It's a corporation. That means you've accepted the policy of the DVLA, the highway code. Yes. You've agreed to it now. Mm. In the highway code, there is what is called state speed limits. That means corporate. Mm. It's a jurisdiction. You've entered that jurisdiction. That means that that sign on the side of the road which, which says 30 on it, you've now agreed to that. Yeah. You've agreed to that because you've registered your car. It's government property. You have a license plate. That's why it's called license plate because you're using government property under license. It's in your face. Mm. So you're using government property. You've agreed to the DVLA Highway Code. Now, what the police are doing, mm. they're called policy enforcers. <laughs> it's all simple. Mm. It's in your face. So they enforce policy. Now, the police are actually separate to the DVLA. They're a private company. And what they do is they will watch you and they'll say, ah, you've got a number plate, license plate on the car. That's government property. You're bound by the DVLA. Mm. And then they'll spot you doing 36 down the 30 limit. And they will think, oh, you violated the policy of the DVLA. Mm. You're fair game. So the police will pull you over and they'll say, look, we've noticed that you broke policy of the DVLA corporation, which you agreed to. Would you like to pay us some money now, please? Mm. That's what they're doing. And then everyone pays it. You know, they yes. panic and they pay it. But can you still get out of it then even though you are part of you've already you know well you can challenge it yeah now there's one way that seems to be working with the uh, speeding tickets although we have to give caution it's come to our attention that the police are now just forcing paperwork through it, looks, it even looks like they're forging signatures to just, just wow. the, this is how bad it's getting mm. they're not notifying people of court dates and then they're just faking it at court and then the people are getting letters saying you've been banned and you've received a thousand pound fine you go what where's my day in court mm. uh, people are actually sending notices to the police and the police are now ignoring them mm. which didn't happen several years ago because i was sending notices back then and it, i got replies now the police are ignoring well, them if they ignore the contract surely they are they are liable they are liable they're liable for then, not responding to your notice yeah Ignoring the contract means after a certain amount of time, they're still operating under your contract that you've given them, right? Correct. Yeah. I mean, here's the thing. What's happening is, is the average person now, if you receive a speeding ticket through the post, yeah. they're not even providing any proof at all. Some of them don't even have a photograph. And by the way, a photograph is not proof unless there's a witness who will swear to it. Yes. So if there's no witness who will swear to the photograph, then it's, it, it's hearsay. It gets thrown out. So the fact that they even send you a photograph is... And that's not enough. But some of these speeding tickets, there's not even a photo. So not even sending proof. Mm. So in the olden days, what you would do, if you got one of those through the post, and by the way, it's not even signed, yeah. you get one sheet of paper saying you were caught speeding, you got, mm. you know, what you would do is you'd send a notice and say, well, I'm going to need more information, please. Uh, give me some video evidence, X, X, Y, Z. Let me look into this and I'll try and deal with it, which is what I did several years ago yeah. to get rid of a speeding ticket. And, and I won, it got retracted. Um, but the, the the police are ignoring this. However, let me explain what how the speed and ticket works. This is why you should never ever use do, uh, forms from corporations because you're entering into their contract. So, you registered your car with DVLA, which means you've accepted all their policy. Now, within the policy, does mm. stipulate that if you are requested, um, you are supposed to give up the name of the driver at a certain time and date. So if you are requested, can you, you know, give me the name uh, of the driver on this date at this time, mm. you are supposed to give that because you've agreed to it. It's part of the DVLA policy, you know, access statutes. So, but what the police are doing, you're not obligated to pay any fine. This is, this is the thing that's a bit... Mm. Um, so what the police are doing is they will send you their form and they'll ask you, can you give us the information who was driving on this date? Mm. And the average person makes a massive mistake and they fill out the company that the police uh, companies form. Now what you also do, not only are you carrying out your obligation by giving the police who the name of the driver, you're also agreeing to pay the police a fine. You've used their form. Mm. So one way that seems to have worked, but although it's not now, is you would write your own letter. And you'd send a letter off saying yes, this is the name of the driver who was driving on that day. You've carried out your obligation with DVLA, not a problem. And also, because you've not filled out the policeman's, the, the police officer's uh, documentation, you're not uh, liable to pay the fine. Just by sending your own letter. Sending Isn't there something letter. else you can do where you write a letter of conditional acceptance? You can. Is that sort of same sort of thing? Because then it works under your contract when you do that. Correct. So you could say, I... I'm prepared to pay this if you can pr provide me evidence of X, Y, and Z. Correct. And then because they probably can't, 
then that's just that's accepting to your contract then mm -hmm. that you've you've written you know the, of conditional acceptance yes you can do is that sort of similar sort of thing very similar yeah you should yeah. always challenge it yeah i mean normally i would not go straight in with a notice of conditional acceptance until you've gathered your evidence yeah because I, I don't go straight in with one of those I would send a notice saying, well, I'm going to need to look into this. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm going to need some evidence, uh, some proof, that sort of stuff. Go back and forth, and then you might do a notice of conditional acceptance. Right, okay. Um, a lot of people are doing that straight away at the beginning. Mm, I wouldn't. Um, but and yes. then are you using your own name, and is, it, is the colour of the pen important, ink and all that? Or? It is. Yeah. There's documentation on my website, free to download, and yeah. it goes into all the inks and the histories, you know, red, purple, black, yeah. dead entity stuff. Um now this is the game you've got to play, is you've got to know what jurisdiction you're playing in. So if you are signing as if you are signing as the director of your legal fiction dead entity, you might just want to use black. For example, your driver's license is not you. Okay, it is a corporate driver's license. All that is doing, that driver's license is allowing your corporation to operate a government vehicle. <laughs> it's not you. So. Don't sign in purple ink if you're going to be doing that because it's the wrong colour it'll get rejected. So mm. just color, just black. It's, yeah. It's, as long as you know how, how to play the game, it's not a problem. Because some people have said you know sign in red ink because it's referring to the the real human. It is. But then by doing that, then you're saying that you're not playing the game as two corporations meeting each other. Correct. And then you're not going to be able to doesn't work win the game because you're not playing the game because you're you know you're outside of the game you, right? that's right you're not playing by the rules so you've got to decide which one you want to do and so your thing is different to the free man on the land stuff you're saying that you play the game but play it well mm -hmm. you know so you take on that corporate dead entity and you say okay fine you're going to treat me as, yep. the, as the dead entity okay then i'm going to be my own company i'm going to serve notice to you you've got to do this if you're going to give me that contract i'm going to give you a contract back yes and then that's how you um, put the pressure on them, right? Absolutely. Okay. Now, here's the thing with jurisdictions and how to play the game. I'll play any game. Yeah. You've got to look at it like a <laughs> casino. Yeah. So you go into this casino and say, right, am I going to play roulette? Am I going to yeah. play blackjack? So it depends on the remedy. I might use the red ink signature if it works for that particular remedy. Mm. So, uh, for example, affidavits. Well, an affidavit is not your legal fiction. That is you. I don't think a, a lot of people know what that is. Just no. quickly, do you, what, an affidavit. Right, affidavit. The affidavit is the most powerful document on the planet. And why? It's because yeah. it's yours. Right? Now, an affidavit basically means uh, you swear an oath to God of what you are saying is the absolute truth or fact. Okay? Depending on the form of affidavit. I think affidavit actually me comes from the... Uh, Affirm to David or affirm to the star of David, something like that. I think it's where mm. that's where it comes from. But basically, when you fill out an affidavit, that is you, the living, breathing. A corporation absolutely cannot fill out an affidavit, cannot do it. Why? Because it's a dead entity. How can a dead entity swear to God? It can't do it, it doesn't exist, it's mm. dead. So, only a living, breathing man or woman can fill out an affidavit. Most powerful document on the planet. And when people understand that, they, they can destroy this entire legal system with affidavits. So, we should all have one then well you can learn how to use them yeah the different forms right like let's for example you've got marriage and you've got yeah. affidavit of marriage now the average person out there does not know what they're doing when they get married because it's a corporate merger mm. it's a state controlled corporate merger so what's going on with the average person getting married first of all you're getting a marriage license well that should give the game away you go hang on a minute what does license mean asking permission doesn't it well if the man has asked the woman will you marry me? And she said, mm. yes. Then that means both the man and the woman are basically in agreement here. So mm. who are you asking permission from to get married? And of course, it's not a marriage of union. It's actually a marriage of corporations. And what you're doing is you're asking the UK corporation, can we merge these two corporations together, which would be the man and the woman's mm. corporation. That's what's going on. Mm. So that is not a, ma a marriage in the true sense. If you want to get married with you, you know, your wife or whatever, then the best way to do it would be affidavit of marriage. That's for the living. So an affidavit of marriage would be a declaration of the man and the woman that they got married on this date, and then the witnesses would sign it, and you go, mm. there you go, that's our marriage. There's no um, marriage license. No one's asking permission. So an affidavit is something that you use each time you want to create some kind of what transaction or you don't have to I mean a lot of the times you can just do normal contracts yeah but an, aff an affidavit is normally done in in court yeah uh, it, it can be done 
at home, so you can send affidavits to people and that sort of stuff, and then it would be submitted to court if it doesn't go any further. Now, there is a document on the website, SovereignProject.Live, and it goes into affidavits and the different types of affidavits and how you would use them. So one of them is like an affidavit of status. So if they are trying to force the legal identity onto you, they're trying to do that, they're trying to say, yeah, you are the Mr. Smith, for example, mm. you can get out your affidavit of status and say, well, hang on a minute, there's me, the living, breathing, now what are you going to do? And they go, oh... Mm-hmm. You've, they've lost in a court if you produce an affidavit the ca- the court cannot move forward until someone else submits their affidavit because then it's you know living meets living living meets living so is this something that you just carry around with you all the time for all eventualities or is it a specific thing that you get for specific yeah, scenarios yeah depends on the remedy depends so there's different the affidavits that you and where do you get it from Where? no you write it yourself yeah, you see, you got... <laughs> this is the mindset. Yeah, you write it's mine. <laughs> right, I yeah. write it. Remember, okay, let me okay. explain So how... why can't you use that for, for car parking fine, speeding fine, or, you know, any other kind of corporate entity um, well, know, legislation or act statute enforced upon you then? You know, write an affidavit. Well, it depends what, well, it depends what the affidavit is, is for. Yeah. Um, you know, like I say, there's different versions of affidavits, and it depends on what you know, what remedy you're working on. Uh, parking ticket, it depends. It depends on the parking ticket. Technically, you are operating in commerce. Yeah. Um, you could, I don't know how you would do an affidavit in commerce, depending on the situation. It's quite difficult. It's not like a get out of jail free card. Right, yeah, that's what I'm looking no. for. <laughs> no, it doesn't work that way. Um, no, unfortunately not. Uh, <laughs> Literally like the Monopoly. Is that a statute declaration in uh, commerce? Yes, What's that's what they use. They use a statutory declaration in commerce because, mm. but that lowers your write down. Because mm. if you use a statutory declaration in commerce, yeah. well, what does statutory mean? Statutes. You're now operating in that jurisdiction, mm. and that's very low down. Acts and statutes are very low level. In fact, governments are. Governments, yeah. acts and statutes are very, very low level. The average person doesn't know that. You should be operating in the private, which yeah. operates above. Um, governments, acts and statutes, and you app- and this is where you use your paperwork, you know, affidavits, notices, that sort of yeah. stuff. Okay, so it's similar to a notice. Ve- no, 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 no. Uh, a notice, it's got notice has got some power to it, but yeah. notices operate within equity law. Okay, this is where it came from. Now, okay, let me explain. Yeah. Okay, let me try and explain how this works. A lot of people have heard about common law. Yeah. And a lot of people are now learning about equity law. Okay. Yeah. Now, going back hundreds of years. Common law is twisted. There's multiple different jurisdictions of common law. So I'm going to just have to speak very basic here. Mm. Common law, with quotes, was supposed to be dealing with crimes. Okay, So if someone had committed a murder or someone had stolen something, then you would go to court and there would be a jury and then you would be innocent until proven guilty and then the jury decides if you're guilty or not and they would pass the, the judgment, if mm. you like. Okay, So that's common law. Now, common law also could deal with disputes. So if you've got two people who are in dispute over farmland or something like that, it could also be dealt with the courts. Mm. Now, the problem is the courts were going to get very, very busy because obviously if you had to go to court every time, then you had to get a jury and you've got to get the people together and there's a date, you know, there's not enough. So equity law was devised. We're going back 2,000 plus years. Mm. So equity law was a way of two people using their own court to settle a dispute without having to go to a courthouse and a court building and having uh, a jury of 12. Then yeah. that's where these um, notices came into play and affidavits and mm. uh, contracts. So it would be, if two people had a dispute, they could deal with it on their own. So your court would be your house, your office, and you would write your notice in your court and you would send it to the other person you've got a disagreement with and then they are supposed to respond. Mm. And all being well, you might come to a resolution and there's no need to even step into a courtroom. Never, never needed. Okay. Now, if you can't decide, equity law tries to sort that out. If you still can't decide it, then you would take two bundles of paperwork and then you go to a courthouse and then it would be decided in front of a jury. That's what the the word case means. You'd have your case of paperwork. Mm. So equity law is you dealing with it on your own using your paperwork you know notices that sort of stuff yeah. now an affidavit is is the most powerful document there is because you're making a declaration to god of what you are saying is true so like an affidavit of status for example this is why an affidavit of marriage is so powerful because the man and the woman are both testifying and swearing to god that they are now married mm. you can't 
argue that. So affidavits are very powerful. People have got to learn that. Like I say, there's documents on the uh, website. Download it. Have a read. Yeah, want. fantastic. Um, but we went off on a tangent there, didn't we, with the affidavit? Was there yes. something? Were you? T- Sorry, that was my fault as well. Because as, as soon as I say, by the way, what's that? That's a whole open up to a whole <laughs> can of worms, isn't it? My apologies, but you were actually talking about something before the affidavit, weren't you? Yeah, I was, and I can't remember no, what I it was. <laughs> <laughs> we said we might, we said we try not to do this, but it's just impossible yeah. not to, isn't it? Oh, because I know. We were talking about jurisdictions, I think, yeah. and you playing the game. That's yeah. right, yeah. because obviously um, the colour of the ink. That's it. And uh, we're talking about, well, should I use black, should I use blue, should I use purple, should I use red? Yeah. It depends on the on the thing. Yeah. It depends on the remedy that you're trying to resolve. And I yeah. will use anything. So a lot of people get stuck in, in a rut and they will go, oh, I'm just going to use common law or yeah. I'm just going to use Magna Carta or I'm just going to do constitutional stuff or all this mm. other stuff, right? Like, no, you have mm. to know, know the game fully. So you've got yeah. to know how to play each game. So it's like a casino. So you go into a casino and say, right, well, what game am I going to play? Mm. And then I decide then how I'm going to play it. So there might be a time and a place when I will use red ink or I am going to use an affidavit of status or whatever it is. It depends. Mm. I might not always play the commerce game. Yeah. You know, so you've got to depends. adapt. Yeah. And, and on that, because I've got the, some other things that have come up like for a lot of people is ULES is one. Yes. Um, the way we're going towards 15-minute cities as well. Yes. All this kind of stuff. And it's like at what point can you start to exert your sovereignty in these in these issues and that's yep. quite a pressing thing for a lot of people at the moment do you want to talk about some of those then like the ULES the um, CCTV versus uh, facial recognition all that sure. at what point can we actually start to say hey you know I'm exerting my right my sovereignty yes yeah. do it now not rights because <laughs> it, it, rights is not actually a well, let's talk about the difference between rights and privileges. Yes, exactly. All right. So yeah. there's another thing about rights that people don't know. Rights come from you. From you. Yeah. They're mine. Okay. Now, if you're religious, you can say it comes from your God. That's not a problem. Yeah. You can say it's God-given. That's not a problem. But if it comes from government, they're not rights anymore. They are yeah. privileges. Right. Now, there's a dirty trick that the um, the people in government will do is they'll put a word before the word right, and what they have done is mm. turned it into a titled privilege. For example, mm. human rights or civil rights. It's not rights anymore. So they're taking it away from you and onto like a... Well, what they're doing is they're creating a legal title. Mm. Let's say civil rights, for example. They've just created a legal title mm. called civil rights. Yeah. It's got nothing to do with rights. It's a privilege. Okay. If you accept that legal title, civil rights, and you say, yeah, I want my civil rights protected, you've accepted it now. You've mm. just given up all your rights. You have none. Mm. You've done, because it's wow. a legal title. So what it is, is civil. Let's like, talk about the word civilian and civil, okay? Mm. Well, that means is what you've got, the way it began is 2,000 years ago, you had Rome. Rome created a two-class system. So you've got the commoners, the, 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 the plebeians, mm. the lower class, okay? And then you've got the, piece, the people at the top, which were the, pat- the patricians, I believe they were called. And they made the law... Mm law in quotes which is really legal code and the commoners because they were stupid they thought it was the law and they thought they had to follow it okay Mm. so what it was it it turned into civil procedure code for the civilians so if you allow yourself to be called a civilian Mm. then what you're doing is you are saying i accept civil procedure code which is corporate code Mm. which is run by the bar association Mm. so they they now control you so when they turn around and say civil rights, you can begin to see the trap. Civil rights applies to a civilian, which is controlled by civil procedure code. So it can't be rights, it's privileges. You're in that jurisdiction, you're controlled by someone else, someone else has authority over you, and they're giving you privileges. I think we should touch right, on yeah. the difference between freedom and liberty. Mm. People don't know that. Yeah. Freedom means absolute freedom. I can live my life however I, I see fit, all right? It's also, uh, freedom also means a sense of belonging. So if I am free, then I can choose who I belong to and who belongs to me. And that's like friends, mm. wife, that sort of stuff, okay? Your family, it's your choice, okay? So that's what freedom means, okay? Liberty is what you give to slaves or children. Liberty comes from a higher authority. Servicemen living on board ship get some free time. They get liberty, 
Mm. They get liberty to leave ship. They get shore leave. And this is normally done by the liberty bell. So the bell would ring mm. on board ship. Oh, you got a little bit of freedom now. And then the, they would go off shore, have some fun. And when they hear the bell again, liberty is over. Get back on board. Mm. So when you know that liberty, only children get liberties. All right. Again, you know, um, the mum and dad. You know, so let's say little Billy wants to stay up till 11 o'clock mm. and watch the film. Well, if mum and dad says yes... You're giving liberties to the... Yeah, you can't grant freedom, can you? Freedom's no. Freedom's there already, yeah. Absolutely yeah. right. Yeah. Because if someone could give you freedom, then they can take it away. So it doesn't come from someone else. Which is a little bit like the, 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 the pandemic stuff when, you know, they were granting us certain yeah. freedoms at certain times yes. of the day, which we'll talk about in the, uh, <laughs> <laughs> for the VIP section afterwards. But, um, but yeah, it's that, it's that thing, though, isn't it, right? You can't grant someone freedom. We are free. We are sovereign, you know? That's right. But we're tricked into it. We're, we're tricked, tricked into thinking into liberty it. is what we need. Yes. And we're tricked into rights. Yeah. So the thing with rights is they're just rights. As soon as you put a word before the word right, it turns into a titled privilege by someone else. Like Human Rights Act. Right, yeah. Human, Human Rights Act, is they're literally telling you in your face. It's a trap. First of all, it's called human well, that means humans colour, colour of man. Well, mm. colour of man has no rights. You're not man, mm. you're now colour of. And then it says act, human rights act. Well, act does not mean law. It means it's acting as law. So it's artificial. It's acting. So human rights act, they're telling you in your face. So you just got to mm. see it. But then going back to, uh, so when you understand yeah. rights, uh, and they come from you, then you can start exerting your rights. Yes. And this is where you get to take back your power, you take back your sovereignty, where you stand your ground now mm. and you start serving notice on these politicians. So, ULES. Mm. I mean, the thing with the ULES stuff is you've got to understand what's going on, is that you've agreed. Every single person who has a registered car mm. has already agreed to ULES. There's no point protesting. You've agreed to it. Why have you agreed? You've registered your car. It's with DVLA. They can change policy any time they want. Mm. So as soon as you know how the game is played, you can now see the solution. Right? So, because you've registered your car, you've agreed to ULES, you've agreed to parking tickets, you've agreed to the speeding mm. tickets, you've agreed to all the nonsense, the, the paper, paper mile that they want to do. Because ULES is a tro Trojan horse, mm. and then they want to charge you per mile. Okay? All of it, uh, bailiffs can, you know, can't touch your car if you deregister it. You can't touch it. No one can. It can't be seized. If you've registered your car, then yes, the police can seize it because you've already given it away. You're just mm. the registered keeper. The government already owns it. Mm. So all this stuff that people are panicking over, then the, the, you know, you've agreed to it because you registered the car. So, okay, great. Now you know the game. What's the solution? Deregistration. Take your car back. Game over. Mm. As soon as you take your car back, you say, I don't want my number plate. There you go, the license plate. Send that back. Don't want the logbook. Thank you. I'm not a registered keeper anymore. I have now got a loyal title of my car, which means I own it. I have all the rights and I have all title to it. Thank you very much. My car's mine. It mm. can't be touched now. You can't get a speeding ticket, a parking ticket. Bailiffs can't touch it. It's Can you theft. drive on the roads, though? Absolutely. Yeah. Haha. <laughs> Jurisdiction. This is where people mm. make a mistake. Yeah. They're not UK roads. They're roads. End They're off. just roads, yeah. They're just roads. Yeah. Remember, the UK is a yeah, corporation. Who owns them? Yeah. yeah, we own them. Yeah, we own them. We, the mine. But the, we don't think that. It's a mindset thing. It's a we mindset. think that we're in someone else's roads and we've like got the privilege to drive on yes. them. Yes. Yes, it's yeah. brainwashing. Yeah, it is, yeah. Right, let's talk about jurisdiction so people might understand. No, but this. is it not the fact that we think that they've somehow been paid for somewhere along the line and they've been privatised to, to some degree or not? Yeah, who's, who paid for it? We did. Who's the creditor? We are. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. this, when you understand how the system works, remember how they've done it. Right. You are the creditor. Mm. They've used your credit to build your roads for you, all the tarmac mm. and everything, and then get you to ask permission to use it. And not only that, but you have Paying. to pay them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and some extra penalties along the way. Just to... Yeah, and then it hit you with fines yeah. and restrictions and... Oh, when you figure this out. So but, you reckon actually try and get as many people to deregister their car is the solution? Yeah, it ends 15-minute cities. It ends ULEZ. It ends all the nonsense that we have to put up with. Do you know mm. the war on cars that's going yeah. on right now? They, we know what's going on. Mm. We know what's, They want us out of our cars and they want us on push bikes. 
We know that. And eating bugs. And yeah. eating bugs. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. So you just yeah. say offer declined. Thank you very offer much. Offer declined. That's that's the that's a solution for many things, isn't it? It's, it when is. someone says wear the mask, decline. Declined. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, that's that's what it should be. And also, can you not? Is it wouldn't it, the whole game end if you just didn't register your child birth? Absolutely. You know, birth certificate. Absolutely. Isn't that what we should be saying? Because yes. I think there's like they they. Um, panic you into doing it and they say oh you're going to get a 200 pound fine or something but i mean fine. that's just do it yeah like because people think oh, i'm not going to be the, the, the kids not going to be eligible to all the services and you know, yeah NHS well, and everything else but what services do you yeah. really want them yeah really yeah what's the school like yeah they make kids into idiots yeah i mean here's the thing like look ask the average parent out there mm. and say look how was it when you went to school yeah was it good for you? Did you learn anything? And I guarantee the average parents in the house a waste of time. Didn't learn anything. Mm. It was stupid. Okay. Where have you, where's your kids now? In Put school. them in school. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> what? Actually, a lot more homeschooling now, actually. They are. I have to say, there is, being a, there is a bit of a shift going on at the moment. But do you think if we were to say to people watching, take, uh, you know, uh, don't register your kid with the birth certificate, would that be a good... That's a good start. Yeah. That's a very and good start. And what's likely to happen if... Nothing. Nothing, really, yeah. Nothing. They've got. If you know what you're doing and yeah. you can stand your own ground, right? You'll know how to handle yourself. I think the travellers do that anyway. They don't do. They? they don't register their no. birth. Yeah. They know. I mean, here's the thing. If you register your child, they are now in serious danger because now social services can claim them. Mm. Social services cannot go anywhere near you at all if you if you do not register your kid. They have no right to. There's no contract there. So it would be. An unlawful act. Yes. That's but if you didn't register your kid, would you still be able to use the hospitals? Of course, but why would you? Well, because the, <laughs> when, would... when you go into hospital, they, they need to get your name, even if you're, you're concussed. Yes. They, they won't treat you and then ask no. your name, so they have to make sure that you're registered. Yes, but so... no, you, they'll... Yes, I mean, you can... St Here's the thing. First of all, you don't want to use the education system. You don't want to put... Yeah. Your, that's gone. You don't want to be using that. Yeah. And technically, now, what we know since 2020, yeah. do you really want to use the National <laughs> Health <laughs> Service? They've got blood on their hands, haven't they? I don't, well, I don't want no, to... No, I know. You know what I mean? Because you don't know what they're injecting you with. Mm. So, hopefully, if you're a responsible uh, mother or father... You'll have alternatives. You'll have private. You'll know who to go to. You'll have um, private midwives, and you'll have all this yeah. sort of stuff. I mean, I don't use the national. I go private now. Yeah. And I just pay for it, mm. you know. But hopefully, I'm pretty healthy, so I've not had to use hospitals for, for a long time. But, yeah, you could be in an accident or something. But here's the thing, really. Mm. If your kid who's unregistered is involved in a serious car accident. You really think that the hospitals are going to say, "Oh, well, it's not registered. We're just going to let the kid die." Well, you'd hope not. Yeah, you hope not. But that would be massive headline news. It would be, "Oh my God!" It would be true. You know, yeah, it's, you're right. I mean, another thing: mm. illegal immigrants that come into this country, they're treated in hospitals. They've got no papers at all. Yeah. No, no uh, documents, nothing. No passports, no driver's license, no national insurance number, nothing. And, and in a five-star hotel. And have, yeah, exactly <laughs> yeah, right. No, it's, just, it's all inverted and it's all topsy-turvy. Absolutely, absolutely. How are we doing for time? Is that are we around the two hours? Let me just ch check how long we have until. Yeah. Okay. So because should we do if we can do five ten more minutes for the for the main show? Let's plug. Um, you know your project. Do you want to get the book oh, as sure. well? Yeah. yeah, yeah do you want to yeah. grab that? <laughs> So I feel weird now. No, sorry. <laughs> I'm, stuck. I'm, I'm trying to sell books. <laughs> Everyone's saying I should plug my book and I go, nah. no. You should, you should. I bought, by, by the way, I bought this book yesterday, got the Kindle version, and it is a very succinct, concise glossary of terms, isn't it, that really breaks it down, and that's what you need to start you off on this, because if you, if you don't understand the words, then you're not going to be able to play the game, and that's kind of what, that's the, what the system's about, isn't it? It is, it is. I mean, I, I wrote this, uh, it, I think it took me seven years to write, or seven years to research, mm. and about three years to write, something like that. But I started in 2010. It's 2010 is when I really got into this stuff. So the first, first you know, from 1902 to about um, 2001, I was semi, just casual. Mm. After 9-11, I stepped up my game and like knocked it down into another gear and I was learning mm. all this. I was learning about proxy wars and how wars actually are corporate yeah. and all this sort of stuff. And then in 2010 is when I thought, okay, I really got into it. And this is when I thought, I've got to tell people. There's a great reset coming. There's a financial reset. They're planning mm. something nasty for us in 2020. Um, now, the reason I wrote this is because when I started talking to people, they didn't know anything. 
So I would say, like, uh, fiat currency. And they go, what's that? And then I'd have to spend half an hour explaining that. And then I would say, yeah, fiat currency is a giant Ponzi scheme. And then they go, well, what's a Ponzi scheme? Mm. Uh, okay. <laughs> so then I have to explain what a Ponzi scheme yeah. is. And then I would say, oh, that's just a proxy war. And then, what's proxy war? Yeah. Oh, okay. So this is basically, it goes through like all sorts of stuff. Law, there's yeah. some basic stuff in there just to get you on the charity, how charity is twisted. You know, it's not what you think it is. Well, they're cartels, aren't they? Yeah, they are. All <laughs> political correctness, yeah. what that's about, freedom of speech, false flag. That's another thing. People didn't know yeah. what false flag meant. Yeah. So they are. There's a, there's a paragraph in there that tells you what that is. So propaganda, didn't know people yeah. that free speech, gaslighting. See, I kept saying, oh, you're being gaslighted. And people, what does that mean? What that means, yeah. So I went, okay, I'll put it in a book. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the idea is, is that is to get you up to a certain level. Yeah. Then I can take you to the next level, which is like the sovereign stuff. Okay, so talk about the sovereign project then. Right, yeah, the sovereign project. This was set up. This is all by accident. Mm. I didn't even intend to write this one. Um, so what it was is mm. that I wrote a whole load of documents explaining notices, mm. affidavits, how courts are supposed to work, how warrants are supposed to work, all this sort of stuff. I put it on the website so people could download it for free. And we set up, um, we did a, what we call a train-a-trainer course last year where 100 people mm. who, want, who wanted to learn this and set up their own workshops, you see. And part of the ticket is they got one of these books. Mm. So they got the ticket and they got yeah. one of these. And uh, a lot of people saw this book and they went, oh, I want one of them. Mm. I went, all right, and so I'll have a few <laughs> printed off. So we had a few printed off and it sold out so quick. Um, but what this is, it, it, it's simple to read. I've, I've made it as simple as I can. And it goes through law, different levels of law. Mm. Um, you've got the law of freedom, law of slavery, mm. that sort of stuff. So it goes through a, a sort of an easy you know, how to send mail, neutral response, notice of unable to respond, you know, parking ticket stuff, presenting your license, how to talk to a policeman, warrants, all this sort of stuff. So it's all in there. So that, that is sold on the website if you want it. But if you, you know, if, if you can't afford it, you can still download all the paragraphs. But then that is attached to the actual workshop that you do, right? Yes. So then people would get that if they join the workshop. And is this workshop available? Can they... Well, what it is, is the workshop itself is free. Yeah. So I actually hold a weekly workshop on a Thursday night. Mm. And we've got a venue. And I go through all this with people. Because a lot of people appreciate the, 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 the documents, but they need help. Yeah. They need to go through it. So I go through it with them. Mm. And um, we do an online course now on a Monday. So on a Monday, we do that. And I think that's about £3 an evening mm. for a two-hour mm. Zoom session. And I go through all this. Um, it doesn't come free with a book, but um, you can buy the book if you want. Or if you want, you can download the paragraphs for free. And I am actually doing a higher level course. So this is just to get you in mm. basics. And now I am going, I'm doing a 16 week course that really goes into credit and debt, unum sanctum stuff, how mm. courts really operate, all this sort of stuff. So I'm working on that. And now. you've also got a bit of a, I guess, I've got to be careful with my words. <laughs> Don't use the word community because no. I think that's probably got a hidden meaning as well, it right? Does. But okay, uh, collective, <laughs> is that all right? Fraternity. <laughs> yeah, fraternity. <laughs> so if stuff happens to people in the group, uh, can they actually share? their you know um encounter and then they can get support with that from the group as well yes we do what we call a chess club on a sunday ah so every yeah. sunday uh, from 12 till about half three mm. um we hold a chess club this is where people can get together with their own individual problems and help so everyone look the, the, the problem i have is mm. i have counts countless people emailing me saying I'm, i've got a, this problem i've got that can i can i write them a notice can i do and i can't do it it's mm. just thousands of people now so I do the chess club where people can come together, work together, mm. and we help each other with notices, remedies, that sort of stuff. We're all learning. And um, that's free. Anyone can turn up. And uh, I do that in, in, in Leicester. Brilliant. Okay. But the online one they can do. Yeah, online one. The reason being is we now have, um, this has really exploded. I think we've got getting on for 12,500 members yeah. in 75 countries who want to learn this. So you know, you said about getting the numbers up, and if you really go, you know, what I'm trying to do, <laughs> international with this sort of stuff, then that's going to, you know, create a real tipping point, isn't it? Yes. Where they they're going to have to buckle to us, which is how it should be, right? That's right. Yeah. I mean, which I've got the, all the remedies. Yeah. I just lack the network to implement them. Yes. 
you know so, I, so the thing is is while I was studying the system mm. not only was I figuring it out but I was also figuring out the solution yeah so you know I don't do doom and gloom Mm. I don't know. Well, I don't want to tell people about. Oh, this is what's coming. Mm. No, I'm trying to tell you. There's a solution. It's a, it's a really simple one. It's a little bit like a martial arts, isn't it? I mean, if you yeah. if you start getting into this, but then you take on the Grand Master with with, with with like a white belt, you're in you're in a bit of trouble, aren't you? Yes. I mean, would you say though you have to get to like a second down level of knowledge to be able to actually take on the corporations, or can you still have some kind of effect? Can you still do a bit of a takedown and a, <laughs> you know elbow drop, whatever it is, you know, with a kind of an entry level knowledge of this? Because I think that's where a lot of people get scared. They go, "Yeah, I've got a bit of an idea of it, but no way am I robust enough to be no. able to take on the, the the system." But what what would be the answer to that? That's true. I mean, I would not take on mega corporations. I would definitely not take on the justice system. Yeah. Don't try suing judges or anything like that. Um, mm. Don't go after politicians. Um, you could serve notice on a politician. That's separate. That's yeah. different. Um, but don't try and arrest them. Don't try any of that sort of stuff. Um, mm-hmm. No. I mean, if you're brand new to this, remember the people that I this 22 week course is basically set up for people who know nothing. Yeah. You're a complete noob. Yeah. You've never written a notice in all your life. You don't know the difference between lawful and legal. Yes. You don't know what a policeman and a constable is. The difference or any of that. So I take people through the basics. So. At the end of it, you will know how to serve notice on people and hit them with a lien. So you'll be able to say at least 10 grand. You say, look, you did this to yes. me, I'm taking you for 10 grand. It shows you how to do it. Yeah, and you can do that with anyone, can't anyone. you? Anyone. Anyone that actually interferes in your personal, with your personal will. Yes. Your personal, um, you know, will to travel or movement or anything like that. Correct. Then you can serve notice on them. Absolutely. they have no right to stop you Correct. unless you've entered a contract previously which says that you cannot move correct yeah correct well we can talk about the passport in a minute but <laughs> i just want to say um for everyone watching so far this is the end of the you know the main uh, interview that i'm doing with with pete here if you'd like to stick around and watch the uh extra bonus footage we're going to talk a little bit about the c word that we're not <laughs> the algorithms <laughs> are going to pick up on youtube but you know the, th- the thing that's been going on the last three years and the um that thing uh, we're going to talk a little bit about that. We're going to talk a little bit about climate change as well. Because Pete isn't, hasn't just investigated the kind of le- legal and lawful stuff. You've gone down a whole everything. You know, rabbit hole, Pandora's, but open the Pandora's electric box cars. to everything. Yes. So I think we should talk about electric cars as well. And even maybe cancer and what that really oh, cancer, means yeah. and stuff like that. Can't talk about that on YouTube. No. So <laughs> again, another C word we can't really talk about. So that's why we're going to save all this for you guys who are on Patreon, please join us on Patreon because that's what actually goes towards this studio. This studio isn't free, unfortunately. I'm reliant on you guys for support for this. So that's what it's going to. So if you'd like to check that out, please see in the description below and you can watch the um, follow up to this amazing interview with Pete. But just to the regular viewers who are watching this, thanks for watching. This has been Raising the Bar. Pete, thanks a lot for coming, mate. Been an absolute pleasure. As I mentioned, if you'd like to see the remaining 40 minutes of this incredible interview with Pete, please consider joining my Patreon and becoming a premium member. That way you can watch the full-length interview and always watch the full-length interviews each month. Plus you get bonus access to the videos deemed too naughty for YouTube, which were deleted. You get exclusive access to that archive as well each month. You can also view my other tier options depending on how involved you want to be. I'll see you there, guys. Cheers.